pushing it. I pushed it. Like a standard peanut butter for poker chips? I, that could be. I don't know. Did I push the right button? I guess we'll find out. Mush all of the buttons. There are too many buttons. Just hit some of them. All right, that looks good. Seize it. Yeah. Good. Uh, trouble if you would do a if you would do an audio check for me, I'd appreciate it because I made the mistake of streaming this week and also playing Risk of Rain last night. Oh, so many mistakes were made. So many All mistakes. All the mistakes. I heard that was a good time though. Dude, we. <laughs> so we, when everybody is logged on really round quiet. one. <laughs> trouble, what'd you say? Everybody's really quiet. Raz is echoey. Raz is echo, echoey. Echo, echo, echo. Hello. Uh, All right, I'm turning something. people up. All right, I've turned and everybody we're all up. echoey except for you. Everybody is echoing like super bad. Oh. Huh. Except oh, so for who? So it's not just my mic, then. Who's echoing? Yeah, he's everybody but you. Everybody but me. Okay, why? Why? I mean, I know why, but not why, obviously. I don't Unplug know. your microphone and plug it back up. That seems to fix your problems a surprisingly large amount. Like, did you hear yourself echoed right there? Yes. Okay. Why? Yeah. All right. Plug the microphone back in. Let's see if that does anything. All right. Testing. Hello. Oh, yeah, we are oxen free. Are we good? Uh, Echo. Hard to know. Go, go, Power Rangers. Inertia is a property of matter. I need to hear trouble, guys. He's listening. Okay. Bill Nye, the, the science echo. guy. They did okay. fix the echo, but everybody's a little quiet Okay, still. it did or didn't fix the echo. It did fix the it echo. It did fix it. See, McDowell, you were talking, and I needed to hear treble. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking guy. You may strike him, McDowell. <laughs> McDowell oh, always, com sense. always complains over everybody talking over him, but I swear half the time when I hear some, like, need to hear somebody, it's McDowell talking over them. One day, I'm going to plot a bar graph one day and give it to him as evidence. Like, here's my thesis that you're the one doing the over-talking. It's called revenge, uh, sir. Revenge over talking. Uh, I'm sad now. I'm just really sad. Good. It's my that's my goal as a DM to make everybody sad. I um, can't believe you made me so cry. I think I'm not crying. I'm just sad. That was a pretty good cry. Like I, I felt that one in my heart. Save it for save it for the ceremony, right? Right. Um. Okay. Let's. Twitter me do here. Not Twitter, the okay, other one, the, the butterfly one. Butterfly me do. Are you tweeting or twerking? I have never twerked and I never will. Oh. <sighs> oh. Why just, is my brain today? I'm going to design an escape room where the solution to open the door is to twerk and make Brooke do it. Why would I do it? I guarantee the people I run escape rooms with, I'm the last one of them who would ever twerk. All right. Everybody's, everybody sounds okay in my ears. Okay. Good. Except the, for the fact that I have the uh, volume turned up to the absolute maximum and everything. So. Well, well, don't go deaf. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, don't get your eardrums blown out. Well, I leave it at 100% and then it just... Yeah, but yeah. Speaking of eardrums blowing out, I got a uh, new phone this weekend, and uh, the 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 onboard speaker on it it's really fucking loud. That's nice though, because you can always turn it down, but you can't turn it up past the max. Yeah, that's true. I guess. <laughs> My current oh. phone, when I put it on speaker, sometimes I still can't hear people. Yeah, I don't even remember what like model of my phone line is i gotta i've been thinking about getting a new one too like what number are they up to mcdoll you got an s right 
Uh, yeah, it does the Galaxy S24. S is a 24. letter, not a number. What? 24? Have there yeah. really been that many? I have a 7. I think yeah. it's like a car release, right? Maybe. Oh, that could be it. I have an S10 that wasn't a car release. I got it in 2017. They yeah, may have switched to five. they may have switched to a car number like thing. Yeah. I could not tell you what model cell phone I have if you put a gun to my head. And I would I think not mine's Pixel six, but I'm back. not sure. I I'd would be a three. I would not I'd know how to check. I have no idea how I would even get that information. Go to I settings flipped, and then about. You I flipped my phone over. It's written on the back. <clears throat> my in laws were giving me a hard time about having a beaten up phone this weekend, but like Brett, it still works. You, if it's written on the back, I have a T. Do you not have a case on your phone, you psychopath? No, I've got a phone. I have a Jeep. But it actually, it's so old that the case is deteriorated. I don't so I didn't buy a have new a case on my phone. Because if I, I break hate, my phone, I'm going to go buy a new phone. All right. Yeah, mine is a G according to the back. Okay, I have a, a Revel V Plus 5G. Does that mean anything to you? I, no. Sure. Okay. Not Maybe. That, that's, that's what it is. And if they spelled Revel wrong. They spelled it with two Vs. Maybe it's like revving an engine. I don't know. Well, maybe. I use it for text messaging and audiobooks. The end. And for working out. And as a phone, I hope. No. Why? No, nobody calls you. It's 2024. Who's why using would the I phone? talk to people? Who's using the phone in 2024? I, I do use it all the time to order Chinese food. They don't take text messages. Uh, we decided that only boomers uh, call and order food on the phone. Use Grubhub or something. Well, uh, yeah, just use the computer. Yeah. Like, my, my stepdad was like, "We don't, well, we can't use the computer because we don't want to put our credit cards on the internet. And I'm like, child. So <laughs> I call to order food because a lot of times they prioritize people who order over the internet last. Yeah, I've actually... I've actually started. Not even that. Just also like, a lot of times the internet just lies to you. Yeah, that too. I haven't experienced that in forty-five minutes. Sometimes if you go like to Grubhub or something, right? But usually if you order from like their website and they're like a delivery sure. company. Yeah, if the if the website is actually maintained by the whatever and doesn't rebound you back to Grubhub or something, then I don't feel bad using it. But for the most part, I think I'd rather just call this place because a lot of it. It's like they lie to you about their menu and stuff too. It's like just yeah. Bizarre. And you can't make special requests. Hey, uh, well, we I, can. I don't. We get a box for it. Except for Pizza Hut and McDonald's and stuff like that. There is not a single restaurant around here locally that has a website that you can place orders on. Well, see, every pizza place has a website for yeah, can't, their own ordering system. I can't think of a non-chain restaurant that doesn't have a website. Like chain it's restaurants, bizarre. yeah, but like, I'm talking no, about non, like, no, non-chain. I can't think of a non-chain oh, restaurant in the yeah. city that doesn't have. How would how would you compete in the Tucson food market without a website? Tucson is like fantastic. I don't live in the Tucson food market. <laughs> yeah, I live in the East Texas food market. Yeah, I lives in the 1970s. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I saw uh, the Wonder Years, and he delivered Chinese for a living. So, pretty sure Trouble well, could get some an- Chinese delivered. Answer me this, Trouble. Do they deliver a phone book to you still? Yes. 1970s. <laughs> there you go. It's very small though. Like, like I remember, like the phone books when you came were like huge, but this one is like, it's like an eighth of an inch thick. There's oh, one yeah. one place we DoorDash from it? called Just Wings. Their menu's real simple. I mean, with the name do like have, that, do they have anything besides wings? They do not. You get we have one of those, but it's wings and rice. You get wings and curly fries, or you fuck off, Johnny. Well, so it's not, not just wings, wings if you get fries. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can't get the fries. Like, if you call and say, I want just wings, they'll be like, no, no, you're getting fries. We're bringing you fries. That's Isn't that's that a pretty good... Raising canes? Like, that's a pretty good way to, to run your restaurant. Yeah, we, like, we, they, know we what make, they know what their market is. We make is two things. Good? You're getting both of these things. I think they also make brownies, but you have to order the brownies separate. <laughs> Like, the more you talk about this restaurant, the less it sounds like they have just wings. I'm just saying they're not lying about their menu because their menu is dirt. They simple. literally, they literally just they're, they're they're lying about their menu. It's called Just Wings, and they have other things no, 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 besides no. wings. The restaurant they're is entrees. the restaurant is called Just Wings. The menu is. 
I think I don't even think it's a traditional menu. I think you just tell them how much money you want to give them, and then they calculate how much wings <laughs> and fries you get in the bag. <laughs> that comes out to four point four six wings. <laughs> Re- repeating, of course. <laughs> repeating, you get an irrational wing. <laughs> it's, it's it's the tiny one that's mostly batter, right? It's crunchy right. and good, but it's yeah. Uh, who has a hundred word summary of all the trouble you guys got into last session? We killed a Hydra. Uh, you did. I killed a, a, dra- a Draco Hydra. Which is a breed of? Dragon. Oh, it's not a breed of Hydra? No. <laughs> Hydras aren't a subtype of dragon? I don't think so. Okay. They're different genuses. Are they, are are they, they, a, are they a beast? Possible. I would say they're monstrosities, if I had to guess. Monstrosities? Okay. We killed right. them. Anyway, we killed... Yeah, we 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 did the thing that, adventur- that adventurers do. Yeah, you did the thing. Good job. We got but the But we're experience. pirates. We're not adventurers. <laughs> Porque los nos dos. <laughs> That's not how you say that, but whatever. I would argue that some of us are neither. <laughs> and you found the thread of the underworld. We did. Which Benny took, as I recall. Yes. Yeah, I, if we're doing an adventure, I might change that. But It's D&D. I you're have... always doing an adventure. Well, I mean, like, we go into a dungeon. That's what they're for. Don't, don't worry Which... about it. <laughs> Sometimes Rez says things, and I'm like, do I need to take this seriously? And I can't tell. I'm just an enigma. Yeah. No way. We already have one of those. An enigma wrapped in a beard. <laughs> wrapped in a bandana. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so first things first, let's go ahead and draw me a line from your current position back up to the Kovnos. Sure. Get them socks ready. Make sure you do a loopy loop in there. You gotta increase your downtime. Yeah, just go in a circle. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not counting that loop the loop. Pull some sick donuts. <laughs> This is where the pilot of the boat got distracted by Benny and we, Naz making out we, on deck. We now, wait a minute. Overboard. Why does the boat favor this route around this island most of the time, but next time you're taking this route? I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to talk to Peachberry. She's <laughs> never... She wanted to take the scenic route because it's on the way to a wedding. Okay. Or, you know, she's a bird, so she was like, ooh, something shiny's over there. Like 14 or 15. I think everything shiny yeah. is in your ship's hold. 16. Yeah, especially after that last one. Yeah. Yeah. No no, starting, no joke about that. We're starting to get to the point where like, there's a, there's a buildup of lines here. Traffic jam. It's almost like <laughs> you sail to the same place repeatedly because it's a useful trading hub. Uh, not for much longer if Nariem keeps doing what she's doing. <laughs> we have found the favorite route to pirate. He's like threading the needle, though. He's getting this line up in there. It's only going to make future lines more difficult. Yeah. No, we're just going to go different ways in the future. There's only one way in. You can't. What? What's this? Or up and around these islands. Basically, what he's saying is that all of this is now off limits because we can't draw any more lines through this. So the rest I mean, of the just draw a line through. that reaches this point and joins with the rest. <laughs> but then it's not its own line. I feel like you've never read a Family Circus cartoon. <laughs> I don't think anybody reads them. Somebody honest. reads them because otherwise... Are they still being made? Boomers. Yeah, boomers read them. There we go. You guys don't read the comics, Curmudgeon? Nah, I was always more of a mutz guy. All right, fair enough. I mean, I read comics when I was a kid. How many hexagonal spaces is that journey, Mr. Trouble? It was like 15 or 15 or 16. I, I don't count. I draw. 
You so that's it. Somebody else's job. <laughs> it's fifteen or sixteen. Is it fifteen or sixteen? Because if it's if it's fifteen, I'm gonna round it to fourteen, and if it's sixteen, I'm gonna round it to fourteen. Then it's okay, fourteen. Then I'm not. I'm not gonna waste my time. It's two 14. weeks of downtime. Yeah, let's sure. call that two weeks of downtime. Okay. You guys want to accomplish some downtime actions on the way? Yes. Uh, Benny and Nazir, you cannot. Oh, okay. okay. Because you are spending the entire two weeks planning this wedding. Okay. Well, with that right. in mind, hold on. So. Also, I need each of you to make me a persuasion check independently of each other. Okay. Your DC on this is 18. Oh, okay. Well, I, I literally cannot fail that. Well, I'm not asking you to make it. I'm asking Benny and Nazir to make oh, it. Oh, you, I, I'm sorry. I thought, you, I thought you were talking about all of us. Okay. I have 21. I'm going to throw guidance on myself. Okay. I didn't get a 21. You didn't that's get a 21. That's a 7. Okay. Uh, so, Nirian, would you like to resolve some downtime actions? Uh, I have a task we, that you might might use I, some time for. You. I th they want to pull me into the wedding planning. Okay. They want me to like spend some time making them uh nice looking invitations they can hand out. So, what are you? What are we calling this? Crafting an item? Uh, we could. I could because I could get yeah like art supplies or whatever okay uh what kind of art what kind of art supplies do you have are you using your magic uh, paint i could use the magic paints but like i have like cardstock and stuff in my uh whatchamacallit kit uh why, why do you have scrap or dream kit Material. I have a forgery kit. It's full of like scrapbooking materials. Why, why? What can I say? I don't. I don't know that that's true. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's look up the forgery kit. So I'm thinking of what a forger needs to ply their trade, and I'm thinking it's full of. It, the box contains a variety of parch papers and parchments, pens and ink, seals and sealing wax, gold and silver leaf, and other supplies necessary cr to create convincing forgeries of physical documents. That sounds like scrapbooking materials to me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's missing some kind of like uh, eyepiece. Right? Like a loop? No, no, no. Like a... I don't... I can't think of the term. Like a watchmaker would wear to see little tiny details. A loop. Uh, a jeweler's yeah. loop. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Was it called a loop? Yeah. yeah. You know, it turns out I, I, I've never known what this thing is called then, and I learned a new word today. Congratulations. That would be first on my list of forgery kit. Uh, okay, since D&D &D makes no sense, and crossbows don't need reloading, and forgers are scrapbookers, that that's the same thing. Uh, I, feel like the forger, I feel like there's a lot of like overlap between the forgery kit and like a... Uh, like a similar like art kit like a, like a fourth graders hobbyist kit yes there is apparently it contains a variety of papers and parchments pens and ink seals and sealing wax gold and silver leaf all right make i want you like to sounds... benny and or nazir on a scale Sir. of one to ten how fancy are you demanding these invitations to be both, uh, both of you give me the, an answer and then I'll take the eight. Eight? Five. So, Nirim, they're demanding an eight and a five. Uh huh. Uh, how much do you care about what they're saying? Uh. I mean, it's their wedding. I would care. Okay. I would give them what they asked for. Well, they ask for different things. Right, which means I'm going to give them a 13. A 13. All right. Let's go uh, either, I'll say either dexterity or intelligence plus your forger's tools. So okay. you've disregarded both of their wishes. You want to go all the way to 13 on a scale of 10. Is that correct? Well, they gave me an 8 and a 5, right? So, <laughs> yeah, the be, average is 13. To so be like... clear, you're aiming for a 13 on a scale of 1 to 10. This is a, this is a sincere and honest question. 
Yeah. Okay, your DC is 23. Good luck. Uh, well, it's not like if you fail, it turns like, like horse shit. It does. If he doesn't get the 23, your invitations are going to suck. Well, I rolled a <laughs> There's 19. only a 22. I rolled a 19. That's good. That's a good oh. start. That's a good start. Uh, uh, so that, that would be dexterity. What's I your proficiency bonus? Uh, plus, three. plus three. So that's 22. Okay. Plus my deck. Uh, plus... Does jack of all trades apply to? Oh, you already have proficiency. I have twenty. That's 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 twenty two on the twenty three on the dot. Twenty three on the hey. dot. So these are world class. Uh, <laughs> your pants are blown off by the, by the fanciness. Like literally on the dot. Like three plus one plus nineteen. Like, right. And he just has an orgasm looking at him. Well, I mean, if she drew, like, nudes of Nazir on all of them, then sure. <laughs> There's, like, a passionate, like, romance novel, like, cover, like, in the corner of, N of like, Nazir, like, being dipped by Benny with his shirt ripped off. <laughs> they're both oh, my twerking. God. They're, they're both twerking, and it's like a, it's like a flip book. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And he, and he looks, like, but he's like, I have to give this to the captain. Maybe he'll like it. <laughs> it's not, like, he yeah. doesn't know. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm sorry you made that more complicated than it had to be. I was making a joke and I was like, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. I, 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 that's why I made sure to understand. Are we going to commit to the joke? And you're like, you know yes. what? I'm already on this hill. <laughs> yeah. That's At any point, fine. you could have said, sorry, I'm going to back that down and go for, like, an eight. No. No. Like, it, it was, okay, so literally I was like, "I'm me, the player, is making a joke. But then when you said, are you sure? I'm like, shit. Miriam <laughs> would be sure. <laughs> I, this is why I don't believe a lot of the stories about malicious DMs that I read. Because players are their own worst enemies. Yes, it's players true. will it's get really in true. their own way every time. Well, to be fair, I have I'm not getting in the way. I like Miriam gets in her own way, and I'm like, well, shit. Uh, Sarah, what would you like to spend two weeks of downtime doing? Uh, she's gonna train her Arcana. Okay, is that complete Is Arcana, or just make, or just make a progress on it? Yeah. Which one? Is so, completed or just make progress? Uh oh, it's uh, four four out of nine weeks. Okay. And San, what would you like to spend two weeks of downtime doing? Uh, I had two weeks left on training investigation, so I am now proficient in investigation. You are an investigator. Okay. Wrong oh, hand, uh, but... can I also, like, set one of the, like, do they have, like, this, do you have a list of people that you're wanting, like, these signed up to? Yeah, I can because... send that to you. Uh... Okay. Because I do yeah. want to, inv I want to invite the rival that tried to duel <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I already sent you all this information. Yeah, I think and we I go. think we already sent all this information. Yeah. So uh, you're sending an invite to Grox Arcanus? Yeah, I'm making yeah. Grox Arcanus an invite. Yes, I am. All right. Uh, just now, posting this in the Discord for everybody's edification. For what it's worth, Grox is not on our list, but we did write at the bottom of this list of names for Nerium. Nerium counterfeited this invitation. <laughs> okay. But Nerium's actually... I wrote that in there. Where is it? I have one more thing that I'm going to share. So this is a pirate wedding. So yeah. I'm just going to tell you yeah. guys, the people that show up to this wedding and the people you've actually invited are going to be two completely separate groups of people. Oh, no. I mean, as long as... I get that. I mean, it, it can be a Venn diagram that is a circle within a circle. Like, that's okay. I like yeah, how they've, right? they've gone through and given, like the full names of every character to the best of their ability. Like, you actually typed out Alphonicus Aloysius. <laughs> yeah, we did yeah. our homework, kind of. We, we did our homework. Alright, so I have one more thing I'm going to share. So, um, I wrote this, uh, which I put in the chat. We made a wedding registry. <laughs> okay. And, uh, the whole point of the wedding registry was literally to just, I went through every episode and picked an item out that would have probably made Benny or Nazir's lives a lot easier. Oh, Jesus. A hang glider? Yeah. <laughs> these are not these are not things that are, like, expected at all. 
a potion of protection against protection against death. Yeah, it's they're just all jokes. Manganel stones that actually hit their target from long range. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the whole point of this was just like as a, a <laughs> something to facilitate the party before the wedding. This is all storytelling stuff. So, I know so, we, exactly. so we can just ignore it. You can ignore it, but it if you wanted to share it, it, it would be fun. Yeah. Okay. I know exactly what I'm going to give them for their as their wedding gift. Yep. Where did you? Mine's I mean, there's not really anywhere to put up a registry. I guess you could have. I imagine that he wrote it to, on a scroll and nailed it to the mast, and then everybody made fun of it for two weeks, and that's the whole point. Okay. So, yeah. uh, ha you don't have any way to give an invitation to Captain Eyes. The best you can do is give your invitation to Tenacity and see if she'll hand it along. Correct. Benny would give the invitation to Tenacity. Her invitation. Is Benny handing it one. to her, or is Nazir handing these to her? Uh, I figured Benny would because they're on better terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marginally better terms. Well, yeah. Benny also it's... passed his persuasion check and Nazir didn't. Benny is, yeah. is, uh, it's hard to hate Benny. Even for... I mean, he's a bit of a scoundrel in some ways, like... <laughs> oh, isn't that adorable? Benny! Yeah. Tenacity asks you why she should waste the captain's precious time with your frivolities. Benny would say um, that he would consider it an honor um, because he is grateful to serve aboard the ship and uh no i think i i think he i think benny hopes a little bit that it would bring the captain a bit of pride to see two of his crew uh working so hard and have grown so close to each other i don't know maybe he has that idea wrong maybe he, it's the opposite you say all of this to tenacity benny would say that yeah Benny is anything but on he's just honest about it. Okay. So she takes the two invitations, and you have no way of knowing whether the captain's ever made its way to his ask. Yeah, and that's fine. That's all he could ask. And uh, he's grateful for her time. So, Benny, you're spending this two weeks doing a bunch of various wedding stuff. Yeah. Nazir, yep. you're spending this two weeks mostly doing hard labor. Tenacity rides your ass up and down the deck. Okay. Uh, definitely not happy with this situation. Clearly not. And for some reason, she's holding it to be more your fault. And if you ever ask her about it, she tells you that she's riding, uh, she's making you do the chores of uh, the, the tasks of two crew so that your husband-to-be is freed up to do all these wedding tasks. And isn't that what you want? And then she, in a vo tone of voice that is daring you to argue with her. Oh, no. Nazir, Nazir just, just, just gives her this, it gives her the smart ass look and doesn't say anything. Uh, so let's just run down this list of people you have access to here. I'm assuming that Benny and Nazir are doing the other ones handing out these uh, invitations such as they are. Uh, Excuse me. Such as they are. Such as they are. I rolled, I rolled a 23. <laughs> I mean, they're really nice. It's just I think all these people were assuming they were already invited. <laughs> this, is, this is a repeat of the business cards from Flump Inc., yeah, I, I don't know if there's like a culture of wedding invitations <laughs> that exists in this world. So, would you guys? Would you guys like? Can I interest you in some warlock insurance? <laughs> hey, here's a for your wedding. Here's a very your... expensive piece of paper about the wedding you already knew about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's we could just say, like Benny's from the the from the south. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think I've, Tenacity's made herself pretty clear. 
Uh, she thinks this is stupid. So Tom asks if he needs to wear a tie. Uh, as you are. Say, yeah, dress however you feel is appropriate. Yeah. But he, is, it a, you are. is it appropriate? Can I wear a tie? Oh, sure. Well, if you want to. I just don't have much cause to put one on in my line of work. Is he going to show up wearing, like, literally nothing but a tie? Oh, he's going to Donkey Kong it, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Instead of DK, dunk. it just says BT for Big Tom. Or LT for Large Tom. Large Tom. Yeah. Double Al had no idea you two were an item. That doesn't surprise us. That <laughs> both surprises yeah. and doesn't surprise me. Not at all. And he probably has been getting your names wrong. Like, wait a minute, you're Benny? No, you're Benny. Come on. This one's Benny? No. No, he's Benny. Uh, it's I, blue for Benny. I, I guess it's up to Sarah whether she accepts the invitation. Of course she accepts the invitation. Okay. And I guess it's also up to San whether he accepts his. Yeah, San's gonna accept the invitation. Okay. Uh, Midge tries to override a lot of your existing planning. She takes the invitation as an invitation to backfill a lot of your ideas of what your wedding should be like with standard dwarven tradition. Thousands of years of stone and gold and song. And if you don't do something to curtail her, she's going to make a hash of things. Every wedding well, has one of these. Uh, for me, it was my mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, I was thinking Midge might be the one to officiate it. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you asked you ask her to? Yeah. And uh, Benny won't rebuke the ideas, but like, it's got to be... His and Nazir's wedding. No, if Midge yeah. is if Midge is a fish, you gotta remember she's a cleric of a specific god. I'm I'm aware. That's why we're asking her. So you and she you knows want a party? You specifically so, uh, want a wedding in the? Uh... All right, I'm gonna have to go to Chat GPT for this one. So god. if it's yeah. the dwarven tradition, that's not gonna work because neither of us are dwarves, and that's not, yeah. insensitive. No, 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 you gave the perfect answer to the question already. Oh. And I cannot wait. <laughs> Let's roll with it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to think about that for two minutes. Let's go down the rest of this list. I have so many tabs open for this ridiculous wedding. Uh, okay. Uh, Phil says he's been picturing this wedding since he first dreamed it up. Uh, Benny will roll with it and say, "Yeah, it was a good idea." Pantaloons, Pantaloons said no says nothing. Looks very stern and sour for a moment, and then gives a sharp salute, and then you don't see him for the rest of the trip. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes. Nunk's invitation dissolves in her hand. It's made out of parchment. Uh, you know who's not on this list? <laughs> Miriam, you made all these invitations and you don't get one. You're not on the list. No, scroll, scroll up on the previous page where it says wedding party. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Miriam, Miriam is Benedict's best man. Gotcha. I mean, Miriam made herself an invitation. Regardless. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They get their own invitation. We forged it. It was a forgery kit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, like, Noose and Gary and Ronald all get what? Peachberry. They all get what? They're just actually major parts of the wedding. All right, let's just. <laughs> oh, unfortunately for you guys, ChatGPT says such a ceremony would take place in a sacred grove atop a mountain peak. Well, we don't have that. We don't we have. Don't, those. We don't have that. I mean, it also says that the symbols of Bahamut are hues of gold and silver, which is just wrong. <laughs> Isn't that wrong? Yeah, so oh, no. yeah, very wrong. Fact, check, 
Chat GPT being wrong about something? Gasp. I didn't specify the D&D version of Bahamut, so maybe that's what happened. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, the people in your wedding party, obviously, are going to come through for you. Uh, yeah. Whoever is handing an invitation to slip the noose, give me mm -hmm. an insight check. That's you. Sure. That's a seven. Okay. I have a, a, a separate text file here called weddingcomplications.txt. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. I want you to save that for at the end of the campaign yeah. and give it to me at the end of the campaign. <laughs> we we want to see that later. Okay. Uh, Midge agrees to officiate. But she can only do so if the wedding itself is, like, if the ceremony itself conforms to her traditions. It's something she takes very seriously as a cleric. And she's going to know if you guys aren't taking it seriously. I've, I've been to a couple of, uh, of Catholic wedding rehearsals in my day. And they always, like, give this long lecture about this is very serious. <laughs> That's kind of what Midge is doing to you guys. So I'm going to give you one last opportunity to back out of Midge's officiant before you are locked into a, a a platinum dragon ceremony. Shouldn't the captain be officiating since you know captain of the ship? They're not. Oh, goodness, they're not being married on the ship. They're being yeah. married in the Covenants. Well, what what do you think, McDowell? Uh. I don't know if that's what we... I don't know if that's what I want. I don't think so, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I think my problem here is it's too... It will become Midge's wedding and right. not our wedding. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And I think that's the only concern that Benny has. Okay. So you're telling her now? Really, I, I really just wanted her to cast the ceremony spell and for an hour and do something nice. Well, that's the whole point of the ceremony spell is it's, a, it's part of religious ritual. Yeah. Yes, but it doesn't. It needs to be. Uh, what's the word I'm I'm looking for? Communal and not hers. So what you're what you're saying is, hey Midge, we want you to cast your religious ritual spell, but leave your religion out of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yes or no on Midge's officiant? No. So who yeah, who I'll would go, you like I'll then? No. What's that? Who would you like then? You could pick someone from the Covenos as well. Like this is, you could have asked them, "Hey, we're going to be back in six months." What about Merling Sam? He probably he's also it. he's he, Osper me. He's Osper me. Yeah. What about the the, the cat lady? No. Lady bird. Lady with your toes. No. No. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not getting on my knees to lick somebody's feet unless it's in his ears during a wedding. Um, Sir, Sir honest suggestion is you should ask Captain Eyes just to see what he says. We've yeah, already done that. So far, nobody's approached or made attempt to approach the captain to officiate. You have that option, though. Benny would, you know what? Benny would really like that, like a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the word he same. Says is yes. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's that's. That's probably Raz hesitating. I think Benny would jump at this offer. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, nobody's offering. This is something that Nazir and Benny would have to think of themselves. Sorry. Idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Benny would go for it. Yeah. So he can say is no. Approaching tenacity about this, what do you what do you tell her? And Nazir, you're already on her shit list. Yep. It's fine. Uh, Benny will be honest, and he'll say he went to ask... Uh, Midge to officiate the wedding and uh... it got real intense real fast. <laughs> so the captain is your second choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty much well, her first objection when you say well, we approached Midge and that got real intense is to uh... yeah, she admonishes you. Some people consider their gods to be very serious. And 
for good reason. They aren't merely playthings to be called upon inexpertly. You've seen Midge busy at prayer each day, I'm sure. Of course. But when she started talking about how to dress and the location of the wedding being on a mountain, and he looks over the horizon and, and <laughs> Midge, that Midge there are didn't no say that. Chad GPT said that. Oh. Um, I've been well, going. <laughs> but, like, that's the idea that Benny is trying to present. Is like she presented some stipulations that Benny thought would be impossible or very difficult. And so you thought Nothing of Nothing to do with her religion or faith. You thought of the captain second, then. Uh, I'll be honest. Says, well, I'll yes. be honest. I thought of the captain first, but uh... yeah, that's a good way to put it. She seems slightly pleased. This is very well. I speak with the captain's voice. Let us assemble the crew and be done with this farce inside of ten minutes. She starts walking up to the deck. She's going to do it right here, right now. No frills. Are no you muss. the captain of this vessel? She speaks with his voice. She says so. She claims. Benny's smile kind of fades away, and he goes, Yeah. Ah, it was worth a try. And he shrugs and goes back to work. In any case... Two for two. Who's your third choice? <laughs> I could do tenacity. it. Ask tenacity. <laughs> no, we tenacity. get the same, it's the same outcome. Right? <laughs> Honestly, I'd it. rather have pantaloons at this point. You should absolutely ask pantaloons. <laughs> no, we're not going to ask pantaloons. No, I mean, as, as far that. as you know, I'm an ordained minister. Yeah, but you're part <laughs> of my is Nerium wedding crew well, already. Is Nerium yeah. trained in religion? As Empress of the NT Empire. Absolutely not. I. If you're not trained I, in religion, you are by definition not an ordained minister. Like I said, as far as they know, that was you get to remember my phrasing. So who are we asking? Who, who are we asking next? Who's who's choice number three? I think choice number three might be Merling Sam. Merling Sam, Sam yeah, okay. let's go yeah. with Merling Sam. So this, we can just say then that Merling Sam, you can just, uh, this is something you might have floated by him on a previous visit to the Covenos. And yeah, and yeah this is just a sending spell if, uh, if to hash out details. This is something I actually he's think willing I told to do. him at some point, like I think Benny went to go talk to Sam for whatever and said, like, as part of a lie. Like, oh, yeah, it, we were getting married. Without like the ability to fish for any details of what these options mean, because there's just too much physical distance and time between the questions. Uh, Merling Sam, basically, you can have uh, like an Osprum themed wedding, a religious ceremony based in the tenets of Osprum. Or you could have more or less a uh, kind of a loosey-goosey, politically binding pirate wedding. Just like, we're going to just crash the Covnos for this festivities on this one day. Or neither of these. Those are your three options. I genuinely think Benny would lean towards the second one. Okay. Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's, like, that's my first gut instinct. He's a man of Osprey, but like... I want to put air quotes around Osprum and also man in that sentence. Like, we've seen him roll religion in all the twos that I've got. <laughs> like, but we're also pirates, so we're pirates think... first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Benny's Benny's stance it has like very vibes based, like approach to his religion. <laughs> Okay, the next complication on the giant list of... <laughs> nice. Uh, Nazir. Sir. Peachberry is supposed to demand that Benedict is worthy of being accepted into Nazir's clan. So at some yes. point, sailing to the Covenos, she approaches you and asks what this entails. Can it be more of a can it be more of a, a, a polite inquiry than a demand? 
it would be more of a uh If we were if we were both orcs, it would be much more simple than anything. Really, it would just be a matter of is he can he crack enough skulls to be worthy of my hand? How many skulls does he need to crack? Does it have to be well, my none, skull? Because no, none because he would you know be he he would be hung in the covenos. We can get Buttface to count that. He watches all these videos. Oh, Benny's hung. <laughs> You're not helping, Brick Road. I'm not trying to help. This, this, the, we, the, we all know. It's the big gay pirate wedding episode. Like, if I don't take this opportunity, I'll never have it again. Oh, no, right? I mean, yeah. these kinds of opportunities only come very, very rarely for a DM. So... You need you need to tell Peachberry like what challenge she's supposed to issue, and then what she has to do to like maintain her part of this tradition. What do you consider your What do you consider yourself an expert in? Uh, navigation, magic, and Japanese comic books. Then put a, put forward a challenge a uh, a challenge of magic to him. Oh man, I was really hoping for Japanese comic books because I might have <laughs> okay. might have been managed that. <laughs> when does this challenge have to go down? At the ceremony. At the ceremony, yes. At the ceremony. Bear with me one second here. Okay. Uh, Nazir, you were... Yes. Unless you expended thousands of gold into this, you would not be able to make a Heward's Handy Spice Pouch. You would be okay, able to yeah, make a no. very nice leather spice pouch. Like a regular one. Didn't you guys just get one of these haversacks out of a out of the dragon out of the dragon horde? We did. <laughs> that's funny. But I think we use that for party use. I'm willing yeah, to say that that ha part. just happened to be this wacky spice pouch and that you can spend some time <laughs> embroidering your names on it. If the party's willing to give up that magic item. I don't think that they need to do that. Yeah, no. Okay. We, we just, draw we just hand wave, that. like... This group has done dumber things with more useful items, so... Yeah, no, I'm it's... not gonna... It's worth asking the question. Okay. We're yeah, trying not... to be confident. Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay. Well, never gonna let me live that luck blade down. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, Zook with the hag's treasure. With yeah, the but the, the, the that, that's treasure. like a. But that, that's like just that. That's a. That's a. A nebulous number of infinity gold pieces. <laughs> this is one specific item. Now. Apparently there there's a, a defined part of the wedding simply stipulated to be a wild card element related to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Who's in charge of that? When I oh, read I think... that, I genuinely thought it was you, Brick. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I that that was that was like just some what some weird thought that might come from either being something suitably piratey or that. We um, uh, or something, something around it, whether it be like the bachelor party or the, That's or, or or the or reception or whatever, what have you. Okay. Mm hmm. All right, dance party. Yeah. 
bear with me one moment. There's a lot of bears involved in this wedding. <laughs> I mean, two of them are getting married. Long. Wow. That's good. Okay. I'm impressed. Dusan or Sora have any official uh, role in this in the ceremony, reception, or bachelor party? No, unless one of them wants to go on their own recognizance for something. Well, typically, the groom chooses who plans the bachelor party. So if you want to specify who that is, that would help me theme the bachelor party appropriately. You've got Nerium and Peachberry as your is your best men. Uh, oh. Neither of them are men, so. Yeah. I, I don't know if anybody else has this in their head, but I, I've literally been, the entire time, have been picturing, picturing Nazir as the bride because Good it's job. funnier. It's fun. <laughs> It's just funnier. I'm sorry. Just picturing big mur burly or orc man in a veil. Uh. Say so who? Who? Which? Which of these characters is planning the bachelor party? Is the question. Of the wedding party. Anybody? Yeah. Anybody you want? It doesn't have to be in a wedding party. This is this is oh. y'all's day. Gary. Yeah, I was going to lean towards Gary. Yeah. Okay. Because he would make the craziest bachelor party. How much gold do you give him to accomplish this? Uh, how much do I have? How much do I have? Quite a bit, actually. Okay. Uh, picking 150 each. What do you say? That's <laughs> okay. I was I was gonna give him a thousand. <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ! I I have no concept of this. Okay, so yeah, okay, so 150 feels like so 300 total. Yeah, 300 is, total. Is, is that enough? I okay. I genuinely don't would... know the answer to this question. It takes like one silver a day to live. <laughs> I <just> yeah. Want... <laughs> yeah that's, to live that's reasonably nice. well, that's like middle class. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm equating, like, okay, so if that's true, then I'm equating 300 gold to be, like, $3,000 or something. Or maybe I'm yeah, off my order of magnitude. Here. I mean, dudes have dropped $3,000 on a bachelor party. I, 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 I have no plans on ever getting married. Like, I don't know how much any of this costs. I know weddings can be in the tens of thousands of dollars, but that's all I know. Yeah, they, they sure can. Yeah. I think, like, <laughs> assuming like you can like live a comfortable existence for twenty twenty five dollars a day, three hundred gold is like the equivalent of like sixty five thousand dollars on a bachelor party, okay. or something like something stupid like that. But it's a drop in a bucket to D and D adventures, so yeah, is, like yeah. I have almost two thousand gold. Okay. Yeah, no, I think yeah, no, I think one hundred and fifty for e from each of us is a is a, is a, is, a, is a is a good sum to set things up. Yeah, that's right. fine with me. When when they have done that and they have left, Nerium slides up and hands him two hundred and fifty gold more and says to make it really, <laughs> really wild. So he's up to five fifty. Yes. <laughs> okay. I literally have the most gold in the party. I want yeah, that said. Yeah, you, you have a lot of money. I mean, that I said, to... we all have a lot of money. So. I have to think about costly spell components, so. <laughs> okay. I am not going ham sandwich. <laughs> I'm trying to have a frugal wedding with when, you're, when your partner literally has no concept of money. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Welcome to every American man, basically. That's how every eh. wedding goes. I don't think I had any problems with like, like that. Pina was also very good about it. Our wedding was super frugal. She let me... Yeah. <laughs> my, mine was very frugal as well. Yeah, mine and Simon's. <laughs> but I've been to a few in my day that were... That they're probably this, this, still this, paying this, like, for. like proto-COVID days here in the U.S. Yeah. for when things were happening. So All right. It was not, a, uh, not, not an extravagant affair. 
let's save this map because I'm, if I don't, Trouble's going to redraw that line and that makes him cranky. Oh man, I had to open Google Chrome so I could get the Covnos map out. You know, it was open in Google Chrome. Pan, Pan and Coex video <laughs> that I'm only halfway through. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, can't wait to get I mean, back you could to that. You can just play it while you're running D and D. I could. No, you can't. You have to pay attention to that shit. I you like, put that on the background. You have to watch it twice, don't you? Because the first yeah. time you watch it, you get enough context to understand what's happening the second time. All right, here's the 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 cub nose. I'm gonna delete all lines. The cub nose. The cub nose. Now the the question is, do uh, do we need to bring dates? Is this also going to be like my big date thing? So that was only if you want to. Or is that, is that coming later? Like this, that's part of the list of things that I'm going to go down here. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of like breaking it up into daily actions, we're just going to kind of do a bunch of pre-wedding actions whenever you guys want to jump in. But since Triple mentioned it, yes, who is everybody's date? Uh, Benedict State is this year. This is the one time in this whole session you shouldn't say anything. <laughs> is, is, is Sarah or San or Niriam bringing a date? Uh, no. Sarah, Sarah is going to try and find the prettiest girl in town and see if she will go with her. That's Niriam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I will ask Nerea if she wants to be her date. Uh, I was going to, uh, I was going to invite the Golden Claw. What? Yeah, she will find the second prettiest girl in town. So, hold on, Miriam, you're gonna what? approach the Golden Claw. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ask him if he wants to be my date for the wedding. All right, we have to focus on this now. So, first question is, how are you going to <laughs> approach him? I'm gonna send him a sending spell. Okay. Yeah, what's up? You want to be my date for a wedding? You could reply to this message. <laughs> Out of the 400,000 things I would expect to happen in a three-form session like this, that's not one of them. <laughs> I was not... Ex I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I was expecting, half expecting the Golden Claw to crash the wedding, but... I'm and telling you, it is my it's my duty. It's like I'm going to ruin this man's life. Which man, Nazir or Benny? <laughs> Both. Like all the claws. <laughs> it's my wow. stated goal. I'm going to I'm going to make him regret regret. He's gonna get he's gonna get a tattoo on his chest. It's gonna say I have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 would it feel like? To go to your own wedding and realize that one of your invitees has brought as their plus one your, like, sworn rival who has definitely tried to kill you. I don't know if they're sworn rivals. Yeah, like, I, I feel like I feel like he tried to kill us, like, as, like, a matter of course, but, like, hasn't really put too much thought into us after that. <laughs> that mean, might be a I little bit of conflict between, like, the officiant of the wedding now, but... <laughs> But like, there's like, there's there's reasoning behind this. One, again, I do, I do want to just continue to mess with the Golden Claw, <laughs> right? Uh, that is like reason number one uh, that Miriam will not tell you. Okay. Like she she will couch it in a thousand different like reasons. So Miriam, but, like there's, the, there's also the whole like we have to look like we're not trying to. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? Look too biased towards one side of the counsel to the other perhaps not surprisingly Trastyova, one of the six most important people in the covenos ghosts your invitation to be a date to a wedding of two people he does not care about <laughs> right <laughs> so going stag now nah, i'll go uh i'll go with uh Sirak, I I could be Sirak's date. Okay. Well, hold on, Sirak. Sirak, hearing that you're going to ask Golden Claw, Sirak is going to go ask Sweetie Bird. 
That sweetie bird can do much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts her feelings. <laughs> I have to focus on this now. Okay. She'll, she'll go with Nerium. There will be no flirting, though. Is there anything special being done as far as costuming? You guys going to wear nice suits? So you're going to require your wedding party to dress in a particular way? Sarah is going to... Did she did she keep all of her clothing from when she was a slave? You, if you want it, yeah. Okay. Then she, 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 is going, she is going to wear her, her royal princess attire from before she was captured. It's probably in pretty bad shape if she had it all through slavery. Is she having it repaired first, or is she going to show yeah, up? Yeah, she's going to have it repaired first. Okay. Uh, let's say that costs 100 gold. Okay. He's got he's got his plate mail. He doesn't... Yeah, I got my plus one AC. I'm good. Any thoughts from gonna... the grooms? Look oh, Benny was going to wear his plate mail. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pay and have a nice cape made for the plate mail. His cape is already really nice. It's oh. the flag that flies upon the deceit. What about Nazir? Right, I, I'm getting... Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I can I can procure some uh, some fine clothing as Grace. needed. So otherwise, it's a come-as-you-are kind of affair. You're not... I'm going to make everybody every bridesmaid yeah. wear an ugly oh, dress. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Peachberry's probably fun. going to... On accident, wear an ugly dress that she thinks looks fantastic. Chartreuse. It's fine. <laughs> Wearing like a seafoam prom dress? With the understanding that I've recently run the Planescape uh, Fortune's Wheel adventure with an evil cake. Are you guys having a cake? Didn't we just have an evil cake in the campaign in the pyramid that Benny ate? We did, did just have an evil cake. What What are the I odds forgot. of us getting a second evil cake, right? I've run that encounter twice, and I'm, it was an excellent encounter. What are the odds of it happening again? Like, zero. What are the odds? Let I there mean, be cake. Let Let's there, let let there be cake. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, what are we thinking for this cake? Which number Seven. do I pick? That isn't the cake that will cause. Well, me to I'll, die. I'll put it this way: you can put somebody in charge of it. Who are you putting in charge of it? Oh, Ronald. Do you want is Ronald creating this cake, or is he procuring it somehow, or are you not specifying? I would ask him if it's within his skill set. We get a fun fetty. <laughs> the the problem with asking Ronald questions like that is he's so self deprecating. <laughs> Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get a good answer out of him. So go ahead and roll an insight check. Okay. Well, my second question would have been having worked like I Benny works under Ronald. Mm -hmm. Like, if having worked with him for like four or five months, it's been. Has he seen him ever make or bake something like that? Oh yeah, no. Ronald has the skill set for it, but he tell he tells you he doesn't. He tells okay, you he's well, you, he's well, the last person you want baking anything. With my two, I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> yeah. So, Ron, yeah, Ronald's um, very self-deprecating and very, oh, you, you know, you don't, you don't want me to do this, surely. Well, he is on my best man list, so I'm going to ask him to do it. Okay. I'm going to ask him to do it anyway. And I want him to make a, a 13 out of 10 kick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much money do you give him? To procure ingredients and forty five hundred gold. No, I, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how much a cake would cost. Like a hundred. That's a pretty extravagant cake, right? That's okay. a very extravagant <laughs> cake. <laughs> Once again, I've overshot by possibly an order of magnitude. Like I don't know. Adventurers don't know what money even is anyway. <laughs> how much could it cost? Ten gold? Like <laughs> probably. <laughs> that's a banana cake. That's the price of a banana. <laughs> But I get so a giant banana. Yeah. We're saying a hundred GP cake. I don't know what to spend. <laughs> I mean, so are we saying a hundred then? Sure, I don't All right. care. All right, Benny chalks up a hundred 
GP for a cake. I'm going to be honest with you. I already had the cake idea that I was going to do regardless of what you said, but now I'm just going to No, that's mul- fair. Now I'm just going no, to mul- multiply it by 100. Oh, yeah, so now we have to fight. Now we have to fight a hundred cakes instead of yeah. The, the, the like the, the the money we spend on the cake determines the challenge rating of the cake. Yeah. monster. no, I get that. <laughs> when when Biddy yeah. leaves, Nirian comes up behind Ronald, slips him fifty more gold, and tells him to add lots of sprinkles. Uh, of... What would fifty gold? Wait, 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 wait. What do you tell him a sprinkle is? <laughs> uh, little colorful bits of sugar. She shrugs. I don't know anything about cooking. <laughs> okay. Uh, got it. <laughs> I have decided this is what my money is going to be used for. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I have made this. I've made this your problem. And if you want me to stop, please tell me now. <laughs> That's the second time Miriam jumped in with that. Uh, music. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I, my first thought, I immediately rejected. <laughs> Pantaloons? Yeah. Does Slips the Noose know any musicians? You could put it, say he's in charge of it. I don't, I get the impression he doesn't want to be in charge of anything. Yeah. Have you asked him? Uh, in yeah, the past. I'll, ask, I'll ask him. I mean, he's in, he he agreed to be in the wedding party. As I looking at the list here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. If 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 uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. It, it'll be his job to uh, well find uh, find musicians. I don't play an instrument myself, but I do have some connections in the Kovnos. I might be able to shake down, as it were. I believe I could come through for you on this. Sure. What style of music is your preference? Benny's like gangster rap. Yeah, he just puts the shades on. No. I mean... Nazir's more of a vaporwave kind of problem solver. (laughs) Oh, I like that. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Like the first thing that came to me was like sea shanty style. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's. I was, style, I was thinking but... of that. Yeah, yeah I was like whatever that. traditional pirate would be. There's not like a pirate choir going around in the company. No, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> think... <laughs> like I don't. Noose's re- response is that such fare is. Uh... Appreciable for whiling away the empty hours on the seas, but surely you want something with a bit more class to it for your big day. Certainly. So what do you ask for? Or is this just leave it to Noose? I'll leave it to Noose. I'll let him use his best judgment. Okay. How much money do you give him? Two hundo. How much money does Nerium slip him? <laughs> Another hundred. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> this is an expensive wedding. All right, let me make a note here. I, I hope Vicar is total <laughs> totaling up all of this. This is Nerium's gift to us. <laughs> I, I like Nerium is doing this completely unbidden, and like as far as as far as I'm concerned, like she hasn't told you, and you guys probably don't know she's doing it. I yeah, just find it no, funny, like, it. imagining that these scenes are happening in different parts of town, and as the protagonist walks away, the camera reveals Nerium walking forward with a pouch of gold. <laughs> <laughs> please do what they said, but make it bigger. Thank you. Please and thank you. Uh, bear with me one moment. Here's another one of those bears you guys love so much. Yes! I'm so excited for bears at my wedding. <laughs> I'm sorry, but every time you guys make that joke, it catches me off guard. Good. Nobody expects the bears at the wedding. Son. Yes. Noose approaches you at some point 
as you're coming up on the Kovnos. Uh, it asks if you've been given any particular task during the uh, during the ceremony portion of events. So there's going to be a ceremony portion, then a reception portion, correct? Where, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. the booze will flow? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I have not. He informs you that he's been placed in charge of the uh, the music, providing the music for the ceremony. He has some ideas in mind, some people he's going to look into upon arrival. He's wondering if you will assist with this task. Sure. He imagines the ceremony itself will be take will take place aboard the deck of the minnow. So this big open area on the deck of this ship here where a lot of like commons and congregation happens. Uh, part of the deck, there's not a, a crow's nest to speak of, but there are some buildings and things that have been built up onto the deck where traditionally the, uh, the forecastle would be. He's wondering that at the start of the ceremony, if you could, uh, before the start of the ceremony, before the music begins, in order to check the acoustics properly, if you could position yourself on top of this aft castle building back here, overlooking the proceedings. How do I validate the music at that point? All he's, all he's saying he wants you to do is be up there. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, it's not hard. I'm just not sure what my job is after that. Okay. He does not go into it. Okay. Uh, give me an insight check. Sure. Uh, that's an insight of, I think, 20. 20. Yeah, Noose is planning some shady shit. Okay. Is it going to get me in trouble? No idea, because you don't know what the plan is. Sure. Uh, I think I'm just going to be aware of that fact. Okay. Know, like, uh, ask about it. Great. Okay. Sorry, I have so many different documents open. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for going to all this trouble. <laughs> Thank you, Brickrod. <laughs> uh... All right. Any other details that I missed that you guys had thought of before we start pulling no, the trigger I, on this? I think no, that's about with, it. You came up with more ideas than I had thought of. It's raining well, very heavily as you're approaching the Kovnos. Uh, so you sail through a storm on the way there. Uh, by the time you arrive, the... Uh, it's dry here in the town. Well, it's dry today when you first arrive in the town. Uh, but the weather remains threatening as you go through the beginning preparations. That's disappointing. We may have to come up with an alternative uh, place other than the uh, than the deck of the damned minnow. How about... Uh, What's the... Uh, pub that we usually it, like this wherever it's the drowned mint or the or the or the uh or that would probably be mom's boarding house no that's down here yeah it's, it's one of these two buildings yeah there's Isn't there's two like pubs a down restaurant there. over here that's like the wings that's wings only <laughs> wings yeah, only. it's like wings <laughs> that's wings only right up yeah. there <laughs> wings and weed up there I mean, that would make for a good party. That's actually where the bachelor party is probably going to be. Huh? It's... How long do we have after we get to the Covenos before the wedding? An indeterminate period of time to get done okay. all of the things that we need to get done. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to break it up into discrete blocks of time. I think that way lies madness. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Now, the Deceit is a ship in good standing who is welcome in the Covenos' waters. And there are more ships than usual that have laid anchor 
potentially because this big shindig is approaching. Pirates do love a shindig. And because the deceit is a ship in good standing, and because you are known to be crewmen of the deceit, and because the lot of you, like collectively, have a reputation for being uh, pretty powerful, competent, uh, you're making names for yourselves. You're what, level eight characters now? Yeah. Get, getting up there yeah. in age. Usually in a major uh, affair like this, which is relatively, it's semi-common in the Covenos for engagements like this to happen here. Religious practices, weddings, uh, funerals for people who are well-loved or well-hated even. But it's kind of a tradition, an unofficial tradition for each of the counselors to acknowledge the event. So upon arriving at the Covenos, you receive these seven missives in this order. Uh, none of you have had dealings with El Vosco before, personally, correct? Not Probably not directly, no. Yeah, none of you have even met this guy, I don't think. Is he the dwarf or the other cat? He's the Rakshasa. He's the Rakshasa. Okay. Uh, He's the one who, I mean, Nazir buys his chaw from El Vosco indirectly. Yeah. Uh, El Vosco gives a very curt, uh, makes his apologies that he will not be attending. That's basically all you get from him. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Sweetie Bird... Remember, this is after you've arrived in port. So you have access to the ship and the city at this point. Yep. Sweetie Bird looks forward to the engagement. And she suggests that you ask the captain to call in her old favor. But don't go through tenacity. Merling Sam obviously has a million things on his mind because he's going to be efficient. Uh, he's going to make things pretty ospermy and pretty piratey, probably. Also, he has to know where the head. What's that? Nothing. No. Probably be best if we forgot that, that happened. Perhaps. Uh, Hashmal Legrato sends a missive. Uh, mm. wishing you tremendous joy on this magical day. As you know, he is also recently uh, engaged to a beautiful young woman. He is going to release a thousand white doves at the ceremony. How? You have no idea how. Yeah, like, I'm very baffled by this. <laughs> Schmidt Soft Iron. I don't think any of you have met Soft Iron either, have you? No, we have not. I think he's the only counselor we have not directly engaged with. Okay. Uh, he's also of Southling stock, although he swears he's not. Or he swears those days are behind him anyway. He gives a very kind of boilerplate form reply. So this is just part of his job to show up at events like this. Which probably means you can expect his presence and you can expect a gift. Okay. Trust Yova. Cagey about whether or not... Uh, he'll be participating in the event. Request that you send him near him. <laughs> he's, he's got people in the pub or in the boarding house who can bring near him to him. That's what he requests. None of the others have made a request of you, except... Sweetie Bird, if you want to count her. Sweetie Bird, dude. Yeah. That's funny. So that's six missives. You then get a seventh missive. This one from 
El Vosco. Uh, essentially saying that he regrets sending his regrets uh, so early that he has managed to open his schedule and he would be delighted to witness your union. Oh, how delightful. I wrote hooray question mark in the notes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'd put that to Nerium and be like, well, I mean. Oh, run along and have fun. Be back before supper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a very bad idea, right? Uh, absolutely. Oh, it's absolutely. A terrible idea. All right, let's do it. But Benny doesn't know. <laughs> Benny There's, doesn't know what. I I do know I do know that uh it is interesting to note that uh Penelope is not the one that sent the missive. Yeah. Hashmal signed the missive for both of them, yes. Okay. Uh I also know that when I have reached out to her in the past with sending, she has not responded. Yeah. As far as I know, you get no uh you get no notification that the sending failed. You just get dead air. Yeah. So, like, if she's, like, I'm starting to suspect he has killed her. <laughs> it's like weekend at Bernie's her corpse. Uh, what's to be done about Nisbeth? Uh, unless we know a, about Penelope, and I don't think there's anything to be done about. Nisbeth. I mean, right now she's in the brig of the deceit. Yeah, she's in the brig right now. So, so here's I mean, if here's the Penelope complication. If was like present, we would make arrangements. But like, if it's Nebula, she then Nisbin stays in the brig. Well, it's oh no, it's there's dead. there's it's... no question about being let out of the brig. That's not your call. No, she's yeah. staying oh, in then, the brig. Then there's nothing we need to. There's nothing to worry about. Ah, uh, there is though, because tenacity doesn't like you guys. So here's the deal. Yeah, you've got this. In her perception, you've got this ridiculous party that you're throwing. She She's heard some gold amounts flying around. Uh, and everybody's attending, except as far as she knows, her. And she's not going to guard this prisoner on the brig. You did invite Tenacity? They no, did invite invited. Tenacity, but she doesn't want to go. She declined, yeah. So, you guys... Well, she appoints Nazir to guard Nisbeth at the brig... Uh, can, can this during my own wedding during the reception <laughs> so what nazir and benny have to do is first of all between the two of you persuade tenacity that that's not okay uh that's not only not okay that's impossible <laughs> not impossible ah it's not physically um, impossible nazir could walk away from the wedding halfway through so yeah, let's get... he'll he'll stay, say his vow and then be like excuse me and then <laughs> just go to the ship. Get there squat real quick. on a stool. Go ahead and give me a pers- one of the two of you. Give me a persuasion check. Yeah, that's probably me. Uh, I can I can give you the uh, I can give you the the guidance. The uh, guidance, yeah. Okay. Let me roll a let me roll a d six real quick. Uh, okay. Well, let me roll the guidance here. Uh, I have twenty so far. That's good. Uh, let me just check on something real quick. Uh, it is plus seven, yeah. So I'm rolling my d6 for wheel or woe on my uh, class feature. It's woe, so I would only be able to knock. I would only be able to knock. Uh, if Tenacity is making a check, I could knock that down. Uh, she's not, you're the one d6. making a check against her. She's a static DC. Yeah, I have twenty. Yeah, I think twenty is good. Yeah, she doesn't That's have to. Good. She doesn't have to roll to give you guys an order. She's your commanding officer. So you got a 20? 20, yeah. Okay. Because of Tenacity's infinite graciousness, and she's constantly bending over backwards for you guys, she will leave it to you to appoint a guard for Nisbeth for these three time periods. Uh, the bachelor party, the ceremony, and the reception. So who do you specify for each of these time slots? So one of the people you've invited, you now have to go back to and say, oh, sorry, you can't come to the ceremony. You have to work. That's terrible. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Tenacity's not a very nice person. I'm not sure if you've noticed. <laughs> I mean, she's nice enough. The good uh, news is so most of these characters are made up and they're not real people, so you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> I mean, my immediate thought is pantalons. Yeah, he's, no, he's, I don't he's think a, she's going to buy off on that. He's not technically he's a, a crewman. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what do we have? What do we have, Ronald? Oh yeah, Ronald's doing the cake. He's also in the wedding party. Yeah, he's also yeah. in the wedding party. He's also so we can't party. we can't take anybody from here. It has to be done here. <laughs> so what yeah. are the three time periods? Bachelor party, ceremony, reception. Outside of those time periods, I'm assuming there's just a cycle. Like, of NPC guards, whose job it is to make sure the brig stays unbroken out of. Well, we Are have... we allowed to request officers to do this? If they agree. I would pick Double Al because I don't think he would care. So if you go approach Double Al, his request then, as long as it, he doesn't mind taking this, this role for a moment, uh, give me an insight check. Uh, I'll take it. This year, you do that. <laughs> He requests being allowed to skip the ceremony, if that's all right. That's the part he doesn't like. He likes the part where uh, everybody drinks. That's totally fine. Um, uh, that's an insight of, God, I'm rolling like dog crap today. That's a nine. A nine? You also have your... I can I can goose that with a, with a, with a guidance to put it up to a twelve. It's more like a, you goslinged it. Uh, Twelve, okay, yeah. Double L says yeah. he if he's if you're asking, uh, he he wouldn't mind skipping the ceremony if it's all right. That's totally fine. All right, so you got the ceremony covered. What were the three parts again? I'm sorry. Bachelor ceremony. party, ceremony, and reception. Do they have to be NPCs or can PCs take it? That's up to them. Okay. Yeah. Um... So any PC that you choose is going to basically not be able to roleplay during that segment. That's lame, and we're not going to do that, I think. But you, yeah. you could. Just on principle. Just put Miriam in, in all three places. Like, No. Yeah, so. <laughs> there right. would be less uh, chaos if you did that. That's true. Who doesn't Phil, wanna... would, you mind, would you mind guarding the prisoner for the uh, duration of the bachelor party? Phil agrees, but you can tell that he's a little hurt that he doesn't get to go to the bachelor party now. Like, he was, that was going to be a lot of fun for him. I was going to say, well, Nunk isn't crew. Nunk isn't uh, crew either. No. What? But yeah, he, he, he agrees, you know, whatever you need, but you can tell he's a little could I, down about could it. I, could I uh, sweeten the deal with a little bit of, a little bit of coin, maybe? Oh, you don't have to pay him for it. Oh. Okay. You don't have to... At the, he's just doing his job. Yeah, so you got Phil for the bachelor right. party. You need somebody to cover the reception. That's when the evil Kate comes out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Midge is going to want to stay, but... I mean, at that, I was going to pick Midge because we're just sort of yeah. working with these yeah. people down here. Like, this is all we have. Yeah. Yeah, so, hey, Midge... Uh, Tenacity Can I horse stories? I could, but I don't know how Tenacity feels about bringing Randos onto the ship. Yeah, not without Tenacity say so, you can't. Can we ask? Ask who? I mean, worst we she, worst she can do... The people worst she's going to do is say no and fuck off for asking. Well, That's... people do not know that we have Nisbeth on our boat. Yeah, it's also true. And well, yeah, tenacity, gotta... tenacity points that out. So you want to hire untested cell swords from the Covnos, a den of known thieves and cutthroats to guard our VIP prisoner who is nobody supposed to know that we have. So you guys can have a party. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, you're right. Forget I asked. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Your, your boss is kind of a dick. Yeah, oh, a little bit, I, yeah. I feel bad for you guys. So who do you ask, Mitch? Can we... Uh... Midge, yeah. Okay. Midge or Large Tom? Like, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which one? Midge or Large Tom? 
Uh, Large Tom, actually. Okay. Let's ask him first. Uh, and yeah, Tom agrees, but he gets you get kind of a a similar response as you got from Phil, and he makes sure that like somebody's gonna bring me a bugbear size slice of that cake, right? Absolutely, of course. Ronald's... We're not have it any other way. Now, while we're asking Large Tom to bow out for that part, mm -hmm. I think that's the time to ask him about Sweetie Bird's favor. So Sweetie Bird simply specified. Uh, at tell Captain Eyes, I'm calling in an old favor. And don't tell Sanity. Mm -hmm. So what do you, is that exactly what you tell Tom? I think Tom's the best candidate for this. Hmm. If we choose to go along this road. I, uh, I doubt that I, remember could, like, what... I I doubt that I could sneak into Captain Eyes' uh, cabin with, uh, with, with wild shape shenanigans, but... But, but Large Tom speaks to the captain all the time. I was going to say, do we remember which crew members think that the captain is real? The officers know. The officers do. Yeah, it's the... Uh, some of the crew are, have uh, doubts, let's say. You guys all know for a fact. You all have been in there yeah. in, in his room with him. Yeah, we all went in there one time. Yeah. Yeah, but no, that's... large time. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, if he could go around Tenacity and let the captain know about this. He says he's happy, happy to make a request of the captain. He's not real sure it's a good idea to go around tenacity like that. Are you telling him that Sweetie Bird has made this request? Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't very well pass on the message without him knowing that it's Sweetie Bird who's asking. Okay. He seems to think about this long and hard. If, if, uh, okay, but he makes it very clear that if Tenacity finds out about this, he's not going to lie about it. No, it, this is this is your neck if it comes down to it. You 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 let me take the lashes for it then. We're just playing messenger. <laughs> okay. Trying to make sure I get all this ceremony stuff in the correct order. I, I would like to point out that to the two of you, now that that's done and dusted, I have the sending spell. <laughs> well, you know. I genuinely wonder if, like, the sending spell will work in this case, or if there's, like, a weird, like, interdimensional rift in our yeah that's what i'm wondering is the situation here because he did magic his door away when we went in there sending works across planes but also it was a symbol as ascending i'm pretty sure sweetie bird could have someone do that might just be a question of trust i guess yeah he might not have anybody capable of casting that she trusts okay neither do we actually yeah <laughs> that's fair <laughs> any other pre-wedding nonsense that we need to get out of the way before we're ready to pull the I trigger that... on step one which is the bachelor party uh, I it. have a magic item that I wanted to look for but that could wait for like it's related to the wedding gift Um, I have something I want to do okay go ahead I need to search the covenos for this hang glider thingy for my <laughs> wedding gift Okay. I guess that's a good question. If uh, Sarah and Miriam also have wedding gifts, maybe just DM them to me, because that'll be funny if they Sarah, don't know. Sarah has a wedding gift. In oh, I, oh I, I'm aware. <laughs> oh, no. I got it. I got your DM. Uh, All right. Uh, so does Sun, on... just DM it to me on my Which laptop okay. account. That's, uh, so does Sun know what a hang glider is, or does he have to try nope. to kind of wing it? Is nope. that the thing we used to get up in the clouds? Well, like, son, you just you just finished training investigation, right? Yep. Yeah, let's do an investigation check. Excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and presumptions this. So let's say plus four. That is an investigation of fourteen. Of fourteen. Uh, so you approach the covenos not knowing what this is, 
But after you look into it, you learn what a hang glider is. And now you have a pretty good idea. Uh, what is, is there anything at all in the PHB, in like the inventory section, that is at all comparable to a hang glider that you might purchase? Like, what is the closest thing in terms of materials and size? Like a canvas tent, maybe, comes to mind? Yeah, it's like maybe a tent. Two-person tent is two gold. Okay. My inclination is to double that, because this is the materials. Like, a tent just has to be there. A hang glider, the materials have to be in actual really good shape. Yeah. So I'll say if a tent costs two gold... I would say for four gold, you could prop. you know, let's say for eight gold, you can make a hang glider for two. Okay. That's <laughs> what I will do then. I will commission a hang glider from the local hang glidologist. Why did they request a hang glider? You think they would have got all that out of their system in that Tears of the Kingdom adventure where you guys shot up into the air and... No, what, what you don't know is that island at the end of the venture will belong to Benny and Nazir, and they're just going to hang glide for 300 years. Sarah spent most of that adventure just kind of bumbling around in the winds beneath the islands. She kept falling off, as I recall. Yeah. That was fun. So yeah, a couple of days of pre-wedding planning as the things come together. Uh, the storms out at sea gather more and more, just a, just a pitch black mass of clouds. Noose somehow manages to requisition a full pipe organ to roll out onto the deck of the ship, onto nice. the minnow. Uh, it's currently underneath an oilskin tarp. And uh, San, the hmm? spot on the ship where he's asked you to be during the ceremony is up behind the tallest area of this pipe organ. Um, okay. He doesn't know whether you have ears. If you do, he recommends you have ear protection while in that vantage point. Sure, I can get some wax for my ears. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I DM'd you my gift. Just tell me how much that'll cost, and I'll deduct it. I mean, it might cost your self-respect. This might be the biggest mistake you've ever made. Joke's on you, buddy. <laughs> so I'm picturing this hang glider as being like a giant, like kind of hiking backpack with like the long rods that you can, you know, telescope together, like with like something somewhat portable and yeah, then a bunch tel of canvas. Telescoping rods and foldable canvas. But I imagine the actual device is probably the size of a fully stocked pack. Yeah, and then when yeah, it's exactly. all when like it's all brew, one of those really big camping backpacks, and then when it's all put together, there's harness and uh, hooks and straps and poles for two people, one of which is an orc. Do we, and I'm gonna Niriam, do we give these to them during the party or during the reception or during the wedding? I think the reception. Okay, yeah. is that correct? So correct. Son has. Is wearing this giant backpack and has covered it with a tarp to make it a surprise. So, as part of Merling Sam's plans as your officiant, each of the grooms will suggest, or rather appoint, three people to present their gifts as part of the ceremony. This will represent the tradition of piracy of offering tribute so these are people in your pirating community who you're saying these are the people we want to present our gifts get our gifts here in front of all proceedings he suggests that uh in order to kind of there, there's a there's a very strange political structure in the Kovnos right now. That if you, you, you need to choose at least some of the counselors or you will be seen to be spurning the governing body of the Kovnos. But remember, there are two factions vying for control of the Kovnos. And the question is, do you want to be seen to be biasing yourselves towards one side or the other? Today, no. 
<laughs> so each of you needs to pick three people to give gifts. And Merling Sam is saying if you don't pick counselors, uh, all six things, at least like a, I, he, probably like one. But if you only pick one, you're showing favoritism to one side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I figure we could pick two. Yeah. Pick the dwarf and the uh, the Rakshasa. <laughs> we, haven't, and, uh... we haven't met those. We haven't offended them yet. Okay. That's true. We... Yeah. I kind of I kind of tend to agree with that. All right. It's not a bad idea. I just think that like. The whole idea is very strange to me, I guess, because, like, hi, welcome to our wedding. We've never met. Now get to work. Like, <laughs> we're almost asking them to, like, do stuff. I feel like that's a little insulting, but... But, like, uh, the li reasons you listed are otherwise pretty solid. All right, so you're appointing Soft Iron. You're appointing El Vosco. Yep. Who's appointing Soft Iron? Let's get that out of the way. Which of the two of uh, you? Probably Benedict. And is the other one appointing? Is Nazir appointing? El Vosco? Yeah. Okay. Benny, you've got two more people whose gifts you want to receive at the ceremony. Basically, um, I, I don't want to come up with a gift list for every single NPC at this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just no, trying I get to you. simplify things a bit. Does it super matter? Like, can you just... Can I just say person A and person B? Just like, say character. Just say characters' names. First two characters to come to your head. Go. Gary. Gary. All right. And who? Uh, whoever Bennett advises uh, tobacco for for Nazir and himself. There. Done. Sorted. Bam. So you, you pick your you pick your unnamed tobacco dealer? Yeah. That gets him through the dungeon. So Gotcha. Johnny Johnny this, Cigarettes. This this kid <laughs> Wait. I forget which one that was Sorry. from. Doctor Cigarettes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Cigarettes. Yes. And That's like, it was, what's his name? Sam. Yeah. Two more people you want to present gifts at your ceremony. <laughs> Was that was that directed me? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear. That's you that's you. Yes. Name. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, double Al. Uh, double Al's not gonna be at the ceremony. He's guarding his. Body. Oh no, he's not. That's right. That's right. Uh. Uh, Charles Chasm. And. Uh, San. San. So San's gonna bring his hang glider up. I feel like I, I I feel like San was picked as the safe choice because there's probably a little trepidation and fear about what the other two of us are going to give them. <laughs> yeah, they're the unknown quantity. Now, Miriam yeah. and Sarah, feel yeah. free to crash this part of the ceremony with your own gifts. No. Okay. I don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> All if right. We are having the gift giving ceremony. Sarah will slither forward. Oh, so are, sorry, we're not there now? yet. Oh, no, it's not happening yeah, now. This is this is Merlin. Oh, yeah. Sam is making this is part of the ceremony. He's officiating. Yeah, don't don't spoil your thing yet. <laughs> okay. Does it only have to be six? That's what's traditional. Gotcha. I was just wondering, like, is it a tradition or is that just like the minimum number? It's a tradition here because there are typically six counselors. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Uh, Miriam's gift is ridiculous. I, I think is it's, it? I think it's pretty. Is it ridiculous. a seven-fingered hand or is it a foot? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's something. All right, I like it. I like it a lot, but it's, it's that's, a little ridiculous. That's quite literally the most valuable thing Miriam can give. Yeah, probably. All right. Mm. Uh, do you guys send Miriam to speak with Trastyova? I mean, if they tell me, I'll go. Like, the question they have to answer is if they tell Niriam that that has happened. 
well, Benny would be honest about it, but he won't yeah. suggest a course of action. Was you. it specified that it, she go alone? Oh, yes. Okay, then, yeah. No, N N Nazir will... She's going into this with eyes open. I mean, if yeah, she I'll chooses to. So, Nira, I mean, you, yeah. you meet with... I am not withholding information. Yeah, I'll go. You meet with Trastiova's man in the bar. I um I do want to say that I am not wearing the choker. Okay. Just so I can, you know. So you can't mind control Trasiova. Right. Gotcha. So I can't. So I can flirt with him. Oh. <laughs> ah. Trasiova has a number of uh, very sparse, bare bones, like kind of hunting lodge type situations in the woods surrounding the Kovnos. Like some of these are no more than like a lean to with rickety walls, just a place to keep the, uh, keep the rain and wind off while in the wilderness. And this is one of the places that his man takes you out to in the evening. So you guys leave the Kovnos before the sun's going down. By the time you arrive, it is the dead of night. Mm-hmm. You get out there. Am I going to be murdered in the woods? It's possible. Gotcha. Uh, there's a group of men. I mean, you've seen them around the Covenos. So you know some of them to kind of be in the Golden Claws employ. Look surprised that you actually made the journey out. Uh, one of them makes a, a, a ribald joke about how deep you would like your grave to be as you're brought up. There's some, there's some snickering. I turn and I look at him and I give him the largest smile I can give him. And I just stare at him. That makes him very uncomfortable. Yes, that's the point. Yeah, he backs down pretty quick. Uh, yeah, and then one of you, one of them motions to the door. He's inside this, this little cabin. It's very unadorned, kind of ill repair. Motions for you to go on in. Uh, Miriam straightens her blouse and walks in. Probably does that little move where she pushes up her tits. You okay. See sometimes. <laughs> she, she walks in. The Golden Claw is a Leonin. He's a he's a lion man. Yep. And he's he's basically dressed in hunting attire. He's wearing leathers. As you come in, he's. Uh, waxing the string of his longbow as you arrive he makes a show of how much strength it takes to uh, to string this bow properly mm -hmm. there's nowhere for you to sit down he's sitting on a little stool in the back of this tiny room this earth earthen floor uh, there's nowhere for you to sit down or be comfortable it's also relatively cold this time of night and this time of year because this is early spring Well, what have you to say for yourself? Mm hmm. I will give you this one opportunity to speak your intentions clearly so that I may hear them. Well, my one of my best friends is having a wedding and I need you to date. What? You seem to be a relatively handsome man. I'm. I know I'm very pretty. Uh, he's very scary looking, actually. Not not sure what features a, a lion man would have that would be traditionally handsome. Uh, to be fair, uh, Nerium is from the Feywild. Sure. So, you know, it's the aura of fear. He points out that in the past year, you and yours, the denizens of the deceit have had a finger, if not a whole hand, in stopping all of his plays and all of his advances in the Kovnos to the point where you've now tipped the scales to the side of Southling incursion. Uh, 
Can you walk me through like what plans we've messed with? You think we've messed with? Just so we're on the same page. He tells you he's not going to waste his breath. It's clear that you're not going to play straight with him. And he's in no mood and has no capacity to play silly with you. I'm legitimately like, uh, like, like, Nerium looks at him and says, I legitimately just wanted to go to the, there is no ulterior motive. I just wanted to go to the, the, uh, the wedding with you. You seemed like a fun, you seemed like it would be a, it would be a fun thing to do. He holds up his uh, hand with his vorpal sharp claws. Uh huh. And an indication that he wants you to stop talking. Mm. Don't like that. I tell him. You have Nisbeth. The Dark Elf, yes? Mm. I give like a non-committal grunt. None of my people have been able to find her, track her, know where she went. She was last seen within days of the deceit sailing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fool. I'm not a stupid man. You have Nisbinth. He's saying it, not asking it. Okay. Transfer her to me, and I will give you 10,000 pieces of gold. Make the arrangements yourself. You will not have to share this with captain or crew. We'll frame it as an escape, and it won't come back to you. Mm. Miriam looks at him and says, she says, I don't care about money. What about this situation would be amusing. <laughs> That's not my call. <laughs> I mean, like she's asking him to like, you know, like if, if you can make this, basically she's saying, if you can make it amusing to her, she might think about it, but just money. Nah. So you, you're literally asking the question, what would make this amusing? Yes. It would be very amusing about... if you turned over Nisbeth to me as a gesture of goodwill. I would be, extremely amused mm. he says in a tone of voice that tells you this man is never amused <laughs> yeah Miriam does a dramatic sigh she says are you sure you don't want to just go to the wedding here's what I'm sure of I'm going to take Nisbeth you can decide the terms on which that happens whether you are enriched or whether there is and he says this with a flick of his claws let's say disagreement mm -hmm. that is all and at that he goes back to sharpening a very large knife that he doesn't need because he has a lion's claws yep Nerium's gonna say uh, Nerium's gonna go that's fine uh, I will certainly pass along that message and she turns around to walk away she says Oh, did you ever catch that wood elf? And then she leaves the room. <laughs> he throws the knife at the back of your head and you die. Uh, Nerium. Yeah. Give me a survival check. Survival check. Okay. Yeah. Ugh. You have a passing knowledge of a great many subjects. I do. <laughs> and she was never seen or heard from again. <laughs> Plus one. Let's go. 20. All right. You do manage to find your way back to the Kovnos because nobody's going to escort you. So you make your way back through the dark woods in the dead of night and arrive back. She's going through the woods. This reminds me a lot of home. This is nice. And with that, I think we'll take a 15 minute break and then we will reconvene just in time for the bachelor party. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. Okay. I'm a little sad that he I couldn't bring him to the wedding as a date. I don't think any of us are sad about that. I am. Anyone else? Oh, I gotta go make some food. I'll be right back.
This is bonkers. I'm loving it. <clears throat> I don't have any food I ate before the like right before we started, so I'm mm. not hungry. Trying to Google good time to Google like how many chips are in a poker set. That's a very unusual question. He's planning fraud. Uh, I have a friend of mine. It's his birthday. Uh. Not a friend, not a friend, a coworker. Mm. And he is a, uh, he is a recovering crypto bro. Mm. Uh, basically he was up, uh, after he got out of the, the, the service, he worked on, uh, windmill, like energy, windmill, like, like big giant, those big giant windmills. He was driving mm -hmm. from across the United States, going from one to the other. And he was like day trading in crypto. And he says, according to him, he made like $200,000 and then lost it all. Mm. <sighs> So I, I thought it would be funny for his birthday to give him a uh, a set, and he lo he he loves to play poker. He plays poker on the on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I was gonna I was gonna give him a set of poker chips or bitcoins. That's kind of kicking a man while he's down. Like <laughs> it, it's funny that he's a crypto bro, but <laughs> he's recovering. He's recovered. Okay. Yeah, he's recovered. Like. He, like he recognizes that it's that it's gambling, and that's why he just gambles. So I figured it'd be funny to give him a set of bitcoins, uh, like three D printed Bitcoin uh, poker chips. So I need to like know how many there are, how many denominations. Just make them each a different color. Why well, asked Raz? <laughs> yeah, I got a new Samsung Galaxy or yeah, Galaxy S29 yesterday or the day before. And it is it it is definitely a a smartphone. Nice. I was in the state where the 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 compute like it was working okay. It's just it needed to it it was it was time to replace it because it's like seven or eight years old now, and it's like you know what I mean. Yeah, mine is running long in the tooth, not holding a charge very well, that kind of thing. Mine's kind of approaching that. I wish you could replace the batteries without yeah like, easily. Like if I think that's. That's really what I need to do with mine is replace the battery. So I could take it apart to do that. I just it's a pain in the ass. It is a major pain in the ass. Other than that, uh you like your phone? Is it, is it... So far, yeah, everything transferred over good. I just have to. What I really need to do is I need to like archive the crap that I've like got on there and like clear out some of the memory on it because it, it took like an hour for everything to transfer and get cataloged properly. Yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons I haven't gotten a new phone. That and I like you know like they don't like I don't know if other. I uh carriers do this but AT&T will they'll sell you a phone and they split it up for over 2 years uh yeah. with no interest there's no interest yeah so, they uh, yeah they did the they did that thing for me plus a plus some trade in value for my older phone so mine just got paid off uh it's paid off so it's like 
that's like not on the bill. So I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. really want to put that on there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and I also had to put Simon's uh, phone on my plan, but I, so what happened was is my dad had, they don't, the, uh, the account was in my stepdad's name and he passed away and then my mom took over the account and then she wanted to get on her new husband's plan. And so she was like, I'm just going to transfer this to you. And so they ended it. So I, so I've effectively been a customer for at t for like, 20 damn years or something like that yeah so i'm I like grandfathered into this old plan that like gives me a bunch of benefits plus like uh hbo hbo max or whatever it is yeah for free like hbo you know max doesn't count toward my uh data plan or whatever oh that's good uh our data plan is like function is infinite like we don't, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't have to, you know, we don't have any limit. They don't, what you call this or nothing. And I don't know why, <laughs> but they don't. Yeah, it's just like I'm going to purchase this two dollar. I'm going to spend the two dollars and fifty cents, and I'm buying this Contra DLC for Vampire Survivors. As you should. There's, there's new DLC for Vampire Survivors? Coming out May 9th, and it's, they got... It's a Contra the, collab it's, instead it's, of it's, It is the funniest shit ever, because the Vampire Survivors people got a collab with Konami, and they picked Contra. That's amazing. Well, I mean, because there there can't be a vampire in, in Vampire Survivors. Right. Like, otherwise the, otherwise, the entire conceit of the game is is, is ruined. But that's that, that funny is. that they. It's funny that they actually got a license for it with Contra to do that. Yeah, they, they said no. That there actually is one day going to be a vampire and vampire survivors. Uh, the guy said when they are entirely done with the game. Yeah, it'll be like twenty twenty forty five or something like that. Yeah, the last update will have they released for the game will have the vampire in it. This is what he has promised. Okay. Twenty some years of the characters. I'm yeah, pressing X down on that one, but you know, whatever. It's called uh, operate. It's Operation, Operation Guns. Guns. <laughs> yeah, and it's got uh, characters spanning the entire Contra. So it's got uh, the two guys from the first Contra. Got muscle some guy one, muscle guy two, muscle guy yeah. three, muscle guy four, muscle guy five. No, no, no. There's a ton of lore around Colt Contra. The one guy betrays the other guy and goes to jail. Yeah, mm. the and red then, soldier and the blue yeah. soldier. Yeah, it's yep. not. Yep, and then there's a uh, there's a uh, werewolf with a Gatling gun for an arm. And oh, then there's the, the robots oh. with Probator from Probator. Oh, nice. There. Oh, oh, wow. I, I I'm not up on my Contra lore. I suddenly want to be. It's I mean, it's, it's the exact effective. sort of ridiculous you would expect from video game lore of that era. Mm-hmm. And then like uh the. I think that lizard character on the end there is from the newest Contra game. The one that just either just released or is coming out soon. Like Contra is not really my thing. So. I'm sorry. I'm squeezing in a day of Stardew Valley while. Uh, while, I'm, while we're on break. You had to get home before 2 a.m. Like uh, legitimately, I. I can't like it takes me like 30 minutes or more to do a to do a day of Stardew Valley for like the first year. Hey, Rez. Like, yeah. Uh, tent kits. Wait, what? That's a thing. That's a thing. What? That's, oh, my goodness. That was added pre 1.6, wasn't it? I haven't played for ages. Yeah, it was uh, I believe tent kits were 1.5. Yeah. So my Stardew Valley experience was I played multiplayer with a friend. I got caught in the scene where Linus is digging through George's trash at like midnight and the timer didn't stop and I just yep. like collapsed as such. You passed out you passed out in the street. That's great. Passed out in the street and then I woke up with like zero stamina. Yeah. <laughs> McDowell gets mad at me when I say I don't like Stardew Valley, so I'm not gonna say that I don't like Stardew it's, Valley. Listen, it's okay. It's okay you to not like Stardew Valley. Yeah, it is okay to not like things. I find it stressful. Like, I try to cream too much in a day. 
Yeah. Me too, to be perfectly honest. I'm I'm usually like that for the first like month in game, and then like as I get into the swing of things, I kind of chillax a little bit, and it's like, oh yeah. I feel like the game chillaxes too much in winter because that's where all my runs have died. All three of them, I think. <laughs> there are now uh, plants you can plant in winter. Yeah, and there's oh. also like other winter activities as well. Like uh, there's a mini fishing contest and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was my go to was fishing. Uh, plus, winter is supposed to be like farming downtime so you can like make headway in the mines and stuff. Yeah, I got sick of doing the mines, though. I got to floor 100. But, like, after that, I was like, well, now what do I do? Oh, there's another fucking mine. And so I just didn't. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, they have tent kits. The tent kits were added to the game specifically for Ginger Island because, like, you can get locked over in Ginger Island. Oh. Like, you, you can't come home. So I got this email. No. And I, I, I like to think I have a pretty good sense of when emails are scams and when they're not. But... I find that sense wavering on the subject of querying my book to agents. So I got this email that's saying, if I submit my name and email address to download their PDF, it is the 2024 Guide to Manuscript Publishers, no agent required. Like, I don't Smells know. like a scam. Sounds like a scam. I don't know, though, Maybe. right? Like, just make a throwaway email. Yeah, that was, yeah. Can you just like make a? Do you have like a junk email that you just? I could make you know, a email. I guess. Or whatever. Oh, I mean, the PDF could also have a virus on it. So. Right. Uh. That's so fair. in like in academic publishing, there's a lot of these like predatory journals and shit. This is probably similar to that in the, in the standard publishing industry. That's what my thought was too. Or more more commonly it'll be something like I'll email them and then the thing will come back like now I have to pay them money if I want this thing. Yeah. It'll be that or or they'll take it and they'll basically claim ownership of it probably. Yeah. What does okay. what does Reddit have to say about this organization? I have no Reddit's idea. It's pretty reliable. I literally just saw the email just now. Uh, Chris, are you a doctor? I am a doctor. Okay. So, all right. So anytime Chris asks for something, we can just make, we can now make the joke that it's what the doctor ordered. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, yes, I was just like, I was like, so like, did you have to publish something to get your doctor? I did. Cool. I, I published conference papers and my dissertation out there and some journal papers. I mean, it's more than publishing. I published, and I don't have a doctorate. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only you have to do the dissertation, which is basically yeah. an extended journal paper. Yeah, that is absolutely a werewolf with a Gatling gun arm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Are they gonna put the spread gun in it? Yeah. Uh, there's a there's another picture with all the weapons. Are these uh, the the Contra vampire survivors? Yeah. 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 There are a lot of them. I mean, like, that's like, that's like Contra 1, t Contra 1, 3, a Hardcore, and then whatever the new one, I think, is the four games, I want to say. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Plus Pro Protector. Do yeah, everybody... plus Pro Protector. Do oh, there back? we go. Operation uh, Guns. Everybody I want to I post the, the guns in the, in the plump chat, and then, we, then I'll be ready to go. Okay. Post the guns in the flump chat. There you go. There's a picture of all the guns. Some of these aren't guns. I, I will buy this DLC. Apparently <laughs> I have the others. I forget buying them, but I guess they were so cheap. Trouble just randomly gifts them to people. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's yeah, pretty good with the gifts, actually. It's possible I you do. didn't buy them, and then Trouble's like, no, he needs to have these. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I pick up Vampire Survivors, I literally gift it to like two or three people. Because <laughs> I'm, like, like, so I'm, like, I'm like, these people deserve more money. Like, like yeah. I've got, I've spent a uh, hundred hours in Vampire Survivors. Like, it, they they deserve more than the two dollars and fifty cents that I paid for their game. Oh, yeah, they're I, I, they're I, doing I, okay. <laughs> Let's. I, I feel bad though. They're doing just fine. <laughs> like it's the op what is the opposite it's like it's 
it's like pity predatory practices, I guess. No, there's no pity involved. Like, yeah, you only paid them two dollars, but so did forty million other people. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're doing fine. Yeah. And they deserve every penny because that game is nonsense and it tricks your brain into thinking life is good. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have a bachelor party situation. Yeah. So the bachelor party spills out from the uh, Royal Slipper Saloon. Mm-hmm. Which is not the larger of the two uh, pubs in the area. The Royal Slipper is D6 on the side of the boarding house here. Mm-hmm. Uh, spilling out into the walkways, and I think I'm going to leave the more uh, debauched moments of the bachelor party classily unstated for a sure. PG-13-ish D&D stream. You, you okay. can write your own fan fiction. We'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll go over it. We'll read it. AO3. Just, just put it on AO3. I'll read it eventually. A blur will appear over the screen over all the choice bits and say, this is left as an exercise to the reader. <laughs> Gary has sourced a kind of liquor called Zadzerbrau. No one seems to know who Zadzer is, or where the brewery might be, or even what kind of liquor specifically this is. But it has a strong, fruity aroma, and it comes in a cache of blood-red bottles with chimeric skulls emblazoned upon the labels. Wow, Raz would drink this. (laughs) I don't know about Benny, but Raz would be all over this. (laughs) So first, I want... Well, so first of all, who's not here? Phil's not here. Mm. Everybody who's partaking of the Zadzerbrau. Who is partaking? Benny. Yeah. Nazir. Nazir. Both grooms. I mean, the two of you would have to partake or, like, risk ruining the bachelor party. Oh, yeah. I mean, Benny's probably already well on his way and would not say no. Who else is in, 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 is having some Zadzobrau? I'll have one. Yeah. Okay. I think Sarai yeah. is not because she wants to see what kind of trouble these idiots get into. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll do it. I'll take... Can we put it in a jello shot? Fuck it. Let's get white girl wasted. Right? <laughs> <laughs> white girl wasted. Everyone but Sarah. I need a constitution saving throw. Everybody within 10 feet of Benny is surprisingly sober. (laughs) They had to drink Uh, more. uh, That's that's, a 20 for San. That's considered poor form for a paladin not to suppress that ability at a party. Doesn't that, like, require constant concentration? Yeah, parties suck for paladins. No, 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 they don't. (laughs) That just means you gotta keep drinking. I have 14. 14? Yeah. Nazir's a 13. Nazir? I mean, do, four. do I add the bonus? Yeah, add four. I think, right? right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. Unless okay. <laughs> you're hanging out oh, within then, 10 feet of him the entire night. Oh, then Nazir's, an, oh, Nazir's within 10 feet of him all night. Probably. Ben, Benny has to be within 10 feet of himself. I mean, do you guys, do you guys <laughs> share right. the beefcake lap dance that Gary has hired? Oh, yeah. Uh, sure, I guess. I don't times. know. I thought we'd get our own. Twice as much lap for the beefcake. Yeah. In that case, if you're not sharing, well, Nazir said yes, and Benny said no. So you got to reconcile that, first of all. No, I thought we would each get our own. If there's only one, then of course we'll share. I bet, Nazir, it sounds like you're not sharing. It sounds like you're each getting your own. Oh, well, then... then... I mean, that's fine. Okay, He's so in Nazir, charge. do not add that bonus then, because there is a period of the night where you're not within 10 okay. feet of Benny. Then Nazir got a 9. 
D&D brings you to some weird places when it comes it really to does. rules <laughs> education. It really does. Benny and Nazir does not surprise you to learn that you failed this saving throw. And you wake up the next morning, the morning of, having blacked out. This Zadzer brow has done a big grody up there. The two of you and Gary and some of the other nondescript NPCs who had been at the at the party... One of the things that Gary had arranged was a tattoo artist. Gary is a Hadozy, and yep. part of his back shoulder has been shaved away. And in that spot, he now bears a tattoo of a slice of pizza with googly eyes and a mustache. Mm. Nazir... Where is a prominent place on Nazir's form where an embarrassing tattoo might be placed? Left pectoral. So on your left peck, there is now a tattoo of a slice of bread with wings and a halo, labeled in gothic font, Sky Toast. You vaguely remember Sky Toast being very funny at the party, but now nobody seems to remember why. Uh, Where is a nice, conspicuous place for Benny to receive an embarrassing tattoo? I think it'd have to be on his back, because his arms have ink on them, and... Like, if you put something there, it'd probably get covered up eventually. So are we talking like a big like motorcycle gang tattoo on the back, like a Ram stamp. Like a Kazuma Kiryu tattoo. If Ram that's stamp. where you want to go, like Benny Where do Benny you want to go? <laughs> I didn't realize I had a say in this. You have marginal we... say in this. Uh, no, Ram let's stamp. let's go for just uh on the back. On the back. So you yeah. have a the tattoo on the back. For the life of you, you don't can't think of why you or anybody else would have suggested this. A stack of pancakes with syrup pouring over the edges and a square pat of butter sitting atop. What? Oh, I might keep that one, actually. Just rocking what? the pancakes. What is wrong with you, Brick Road? Why? <laughs> Are you hungry? I'm starving. I have a French <laughs> bread pizza from Mazzaro's in my fridge, but I woke up too late today to put it in the oven before D&D. &D. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Benny is already imagining how he can incorporate this into a bigger tattoo of somebody eating the pancakes. But I had determined these tattoos when I planned all this out. That's not the result no, of me absolutely. being hungry. <laughs> the wedding I is understand. ruined. Ah. I also have here uh, unicorns playing poker. Sweet. <laughs> that would have been really badass, I think, if you and an, pull that off. I think an avocado wearing a top hat and a monocle. Mm -hmm. But Nerium I feel like and Son both passed. Son has carapace. You can't. Sorry, I got a twenty on that. Was that not relevant? Yeah, it's it, it passed the save. You didn't. You didn't okay. black out and. Uh, yeah, we didn't black out, we just allowed this to happen. Yes, but not none, none of you remember why Sky Toast is funny. Although, it is still uh -huh. a little funny. It is still really funny. I mean, it's a bachelor party. The bachelors are supposed to black out, right? Okay. All going according to plan. I didn't even drink at mine. <laughs> yeah, but you don't drink. All according to Keikaku. Okay. Just according to Keik. So the first unfortunate thing when the two of you wake up the next morning is your uh, skull is just pounding from the hangover. It is real uh, rough. So I'm going oh. to apply a level of exhaustion to each of you that you oh. have to take care okay. of before the ceremony without being able to take a rest of any kind. So if you don't have some manner of healing or something to remove the exhaustion, you're going to be going to this ceremony with a level of exhaustion. Well, I mean, if drinking is a poison, I can lay on hands and remove the poison. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, I'll lay on hands on both me and uh, Nazir. Be honest, you were going to lay on hands anyway. Oh, God. 
We probably did several times. <laughs> but you don't remember, so it doesn't count. While getting a pancake rem tattoo. Remember, fan fiction. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, Benny would use his lay on hands to neutralize the hangover. And also that of anybody else around until he ran out of points. I will say nothing short of... Magically speaking, nothing short of the regeneration spell can safely remove a tattoo. <laughs> Fair. You need to go that uh, high, I think. Gr lesser and greater yeah. restoration's not going to do it. No, no, no. I actually feel <laughs> like when Benny gets his tattoos and he does lay on hands, like, it just heals. Like, it permanents it immediately. Okay. So, yeah. So, the two of you are, you clear the, the, the blackout drunk from your mind. Uh. Do you resolve to keep or get rid of the tattoos out of curiosity? Gary hates his. <laughs> Gary is mortified. Then you'll keep his. Yeah, I'll keep mine. <laughs> Gary had... Did he had Sky Toast or was that was Nazir? That was Nazir. <laughs> right. Nazir's the Sky Toast. <laughs> Gary had a slice of pizza with googly eyes and a mustache. <laughs> and he hates it. He And it's all like on his... Uh, on his shoulder, they they had to shave his hair away and get it on the shoulder, and he hates it. Like, won't it like get covered up hair, when your hair, hair grows, grows back in? Yeah, he hopes yeah, so just... because he doesn't have access to the regeneration spell. Uh, he swears yeah, off cool. of Zadzerbrow, though. Going forward, is is there any left? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, the, the crate that he sourced is empty in the morning. Where it all went, no. you have no idea. All right. The second terrible thing that happens this morning is these black clouds are rolling in. And this is a, this is a real motherfucker of a storm. Nazir. Yes. As you're going about getting set up in the morning, getting everything set up aboard the deck of the minnow... Uh, Merling Sam is there to kind of oversee everything. He's kind of taking charge of the position. You are approached by Grox Arcanus. He saunters up. He's dressed in his finest, this gaudy robe. Uh, and approaches Nazir. Motions to this storm rolling in, saying... My dearest friend, it seems as though you are in need of an accomplished elementist. You are speaking extremely way too loud this morning. Oh, you don't have the headache anymore. He laid on hands. Oh. <laughs> well, now he has a headache again, and no one yeah. can fix that. Now you have a new headache. Uh, yeah. He says, allow me the honor of safeguarding your most joyous of days against the whims of nature. You need but say the word, my friend, and this storm will beguile us not. The word, as he says. <laughs> to that, he gives you a low bow, and he moves off away from the ship in the direction of the guard tower. So... You have banished Grox Arcanus from proceedings, at least for the ceremony. <laughs> so the rest of the morning uh, is very strange. He's performing some kind of ritual on this guard tower. And when the storm rolls in, it's almost as though there's this dome up over and around the Kovnos. The sky is nearly pitch black and the rain is just running over this magical barrier in rivulets. It's an extremely bizarre looking sky and it's dark enough that you have to, that lights have to be brought out onto the deck. So you have this very twilight, otherworldly look to the thing. Beautiful eerie, in its way. Very eerie, but beautiful in eerie, its way. Eerie, but definitely not unwelcome. No one can say it's not moody, that's for sure. It will be a memorable proceeding. So, there's not like rows of chairs or anything set up. Nah. Uh, you've got this big pipe organ up at the back. Uh, Noose is up there with 
the musicians he's hired. He's got like a string quartet. He's got a harpist and he's got this, uh, this hobgoblin playing away at this pipe organ. Uh, San, are you in position up there? Uh, yeah. Okay. News comes around as the guests are starting to pile up onto the minnow. So everybody you guys have invited is here at this point, as well as a bunch of just hangers on and people who missed the party last night who don't want to miss today. Ronald brings a large rolling table up one of the gangplanks over to the side with this four-tier cake with pale green icing and just gobs and gobs of flecks of colored sugar covering it. It looks like somebody has made like a really classy looking minimalist cake with like tea green fondant and then threw handfuls of fruity pebbles at it. Yes. <laughs> Wait, is it teal That's green? Awesome. Really? That's the color of the cake? Tea green. It... Tea green. Oh, tea green. Oh, okay. I was That's gonna say, awesome. does it match the zier? Son. <laughs> hmm. News comes up to you as you take position. So I say that old sport. My understanding is that uh, El Vosco will be in attendance today. Ah, there he is now. He points out the Rakshasa across the other side of the minnow. With his backward hands and everything. He slips you a tiny circular mirror. He says, I was going to ask if you could signal me when you saw El Vosco leave the ceremony fashionably early the way he does. Then he looks up. But it seems we are denied a son for the day. Uh, might there be another signal you can provide to me? Um. How about this? I'll say into his mind. And he nods. Says, that will do very nicely. Does he just use... stay within sixty feet? Okay. Yeah, he's going to be down there with the band. Yeah. So yeah, if your vantage point up here from behind these pipes, with your ears filled with wax, you do have a good view of pretty much everybody coming and going. One person arrives as uh, as the proceed the music is proceeding and things are kind of starting to gear up for the main event. The last guest, so to speak, arrives up the gangplank, stays near the back of the crowd in a place where perhaps she doesn't want to be seen. But tenacity steps forth, wearing an elegant shimmering gown that oozes magic. It's not like I like you or anything, Baka. <laughs> That's really thoughtful of her. Yeah, she doesn't approach you. She doesn't say anything to you, but she arrives. Uh, somebody does approach, though. I mean, I'm assuming you guys are making small talk with everybody. As oh, they, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you've said your pleasantries to uh, to Hashmall and Penelope when they came. They came up. Uh was Penelope alive? Oh yeah, okay, she, she she's with him. Check that one off the list. <laughs> uh, Nazir, sir. There comes a moment where Hashmal has stepped aside with some of the other men of the Kovnos uh, to have a cigar with Merling Sam, Schmidt Soft Iron, and a couple of the other, uh, a couple of the other so, men folk who kind of run things around here. When that happens, Penelope slips away and approaches you to uh, once again offer her congratulations. She asks, though, by the way, and it's okay if you don't know, but uh, there, there are terrible rumors about, uh, you know, Nisbeth. Do you remember? How could I forget? You met her briefly. I was... It seems strange to even ask, but I, 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 nobody knows what's become of her. We hear the, the terrible rumors, as I've said. Oh, interesting. This is interesting, yeah. Because I've reached out and tell, I specifically reached out and told her to, to, to tell her. Uh, you tried. You did not get a response. Right. Nazir, yeah, holds, no. up a, Nazir holds up a finger and he says, uh, 
act naturally, and then Nazir uh, picks up a couple of hors d'oeuvres, offers them to her, mm-hmm. and speaks telepathically to her. I take it no. It, I take it none of our messages received you then. Is she able to respond telepathically? Yes. But no, she's not received any such messages. Nisbeth is on the deceit. And you see relief. And uh, she offers you some more pleasantries, having learned what she needs to know, and then makes her way back over to her uh, own husband-to-be. Oh, uh, Migdol, uh, Darium would have passed along anything in the, uh, you know, the conversation the she had with uh, the Golden Claws. Like, so you're fully aware uh, of that. There was no... Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah, uh, the Golden Claw is convinced that he knows that she's on the deceit. Uh, so, yeah, no, te- uh, telepathically, he'll, in, in addition, he'll say that the Golden Claw is after her, but as long as the Golden Claw does not make a move on the deceit, mm-hmm. she will remain safe. And she points him out. He's here. All six of the counselors have shown up. He's keeping with his own people, and he has probably yeah. not approached you to exchange pleasantries, but yeah, he's he's here. And you see it okay. glance nervously over at him, and he catches the glance when she does. But then, again, like I say, she makes her way back over to her husband. So we're at the point now in the ceremony where Merling Sam has stepped up in front of the congregated and is starting to uh, kind of Go into his Captain Eyes here? speech. Huh? He's not. Is Captain Eyes here? No. He is not, unfortunately. We're not surprised. <laughs> uh, Miriam, you're in the wedding party, so you're up at the front of the ceremony, and San is taking his position up behind the pipe organ. That leaves Sarah down with the rabble. Sarah. As Merlin Sam is going through his introductions, uh, getting people's attention and is ready to start the ceremony proper, you feel a hand on your shoulder. She'll turn around to look. Large Tom is standing there, wearing his necktie. <laughs> we have a problem. Oh, God, what happened? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, this doesn't happen yet. I got my timeline mixed up. Undo. Hi, Tom. Nice neck. No, that doesn't happen at all. He's at the ceremony. He's covering the reception, not the ceremony. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Double gotcha. Al is currently on guard. Okay, so Peachberry steps forward next after Merling Sam goes through some of the uh, the, the opening traditions. And one such tradition amongst Nazir's people. Uh, Nazir, how do you want this worded? This this challenge that must be issued? Like when Peachberry steps forward and kind of explains what this challenge is, how did you tell her to word it? That, that she doubts benedict's worth to to join with nazir's clan and he must prove himself okay so beachberry steps up uh i don't even think i could try to describe a a fashion motif that she has settled on which would do it justice because she's crank she cranks this kind of thing all the way up to like 11 yeah uh, I actually imagine something like cyberpunk. <laughs> new, all new coloration for her plumage and her feathers. A dress that is just like way too extra. Yeah. No, she, this is exactly how I imagined it to go. She is extremely uncomfortable and she steps forward kind of with an um. Actually, I, uh, I, I, I uh, don't believe that uh, Benedict is worthy of being accepted into Nazir's clan. So uh, she points at Benedict. So I, 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 I challenge you to a duel of magic on Nazir's behalf. Does Benny know that about this? 
This is apparently one of the traditions in Nazir's clan. Yeah, was was Benny informed of this tradition? That's up to, up to Nazir. That's up to Nazir. Nazir would have only said that she would uh, that that uh, she would uh, attend that she would challenge your uh, your worth. He to, goes. To... He, he's holding a drink up to his lips and he drinks nervously. And he's like, he mumbles to himself, "I hope I prepared spells today." Okay, what spells did you prepare today? Let's find out. All right. Bless, cure wounds, protection from evil and good, sanctuary, shield of faith, thunderous smite, lesser restoration, locate object, prayer of healing, protection from poison, warding bond, and zone of truth. Okay. So yeah, the, they they clear a spot for this for this magic duel to happen. Prepare to get lightning bolted, son. And, I uh, am wearing plate mail. <laughs> I, gu I guess she she steps forth and she begins casting a spell. Uh, I guess we'll roll some initiative. You can, <laughs> can you roll better than eight? Uh, 19. Okay, so you can decide to act first or let her act first. It's up to you. I mean, I'm not going to hit her with my sword. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to. It's a magic duel. That's well. All my spells channel into my sword. Oh well, well, you better do something. It's your wedding. It's your big day. Can you <laughs> thunderous smite puncher? <laughs> no, you can't. I have to put it in a weapon. Seems like an oversight. Yeah. Uh, don't don't get me started about that one. <laughs> yeah, I actually have. I mean, paladins famously don't have offensive spells. So well. Uh, Bless? <laughs> You're going to cast Bless? Sure. Okay. What, what, who are you blessing? Uh, myself and Nazir. Okay. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no, she is thunderbolting your ass. <laughs> Let's see here. Add to a saving throw. Okay, so Bless does apply to this. Yeah. <laughs> uh... 19. 19. I think that passes yeah. actually. Yeah. Let me double let me make sure. What is she casting at me? I mean, I leveled her stat block up <laughs> because I knew <laughs> I did that during the break here since I can't imagine her DC is 19. <laughs> My DC is Miriam's is like 17, right? Uh 16. And I have yeah, a plus 5. Yeah. So yeah. I have a yeah. plus 4 and it's 15, so Okay, yeah, you passed the save. So you can go ahead and take 50 points of fire damage, which you can cut in half for passing the save. As she lets loose this fireball on you, just explodes and sets that whole section of the minnow ablaze. Very important question. Yeah. Am I allowed to have the thither boots? Because I said I'd bring them to the wedding long ago. You did. I, that's what I heard, too, is... That you were wearing okay. the boots. I'm gonna spend a blip and reduce that damage to zero. Okay. The blips are coming out at the well, wedding. I've never gotten to use this ability because I've never <laughs> rolled a dexterity save where I both passed and it was worth it. So I will reduce the 50 damage to zero. Alright. <laughs> Benedict erupts uh, or, or like backflips out of that and is completely unscathed. So there are gasps and horror and, and shock as she unleashes this. And as soon as she casts this spell, she looks mortified. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for... Oh my god. And people come out with patting the fire out, uh, getting Nazir, it all under control. Nazir casts create water in a... Uh, in, in, the, uh, in the like rain area, with the rain type style. To douse the uh, flames. Okay. You guys hear Dario in the background, like like clapping as loudly as she can. <laughs> and then after person, Dario, what happens if Benny loses? After a moment, Benny, uh, like Peachberry comes over, is making sure you're okay, and is like grabbing you by the shoulder. Oh my God, are you hurt? I didn't mean. You told me it was a mad. I was trying to win. I th and she turns around. It's okay, guys. He's he's worthy. He's totally totally <laughs> worthy. And uh. 
Then she very Excellent. embarrassed and she she puts her head in her hands and just sulks off to the back of the ship. Uh, Benny, Benny will raise his glass and say to Peachberry as she watches walks back. So now everybody which turns from... embarrassed, which probably embarrasses her, but he thinks that it like like he's grateful for it. Like he's genuinely grateful, but he's yeah, he looks situation. extremely happy with all of this. So now everybody's watching her walk of shame to the back as you're toasting her her treats. <laughs> so I will yeah, it's it's definitely a misread of the situation, but like he's grateful. Sarah will what? He has made, he's proven that he's worthy. Sarah, Sarah is going to try and comfort Peachberry and tell her that she did a good job and next time she should use a more powerful spell. That's the most powerful fireball I have. I would, I did, she clearly didn't. Nerium yells, uh, Nerium yells to Peachberry and says, that was hot. Nice. <laughs> we'll, we'll take you on more adventures so you can learn more stuff. Don't worry. She doesn't okay. want that. I don't think she wants that. So as I'm going through, I'm just crossing off the events that happened during the wedding so we can cross off Peachberry Fireballs the fuck out of Benny. <laughs> Bo commits uh, property damage. I get AP on the boots for that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I awarded you AP on the boots for spending yes. the blitz. Okay. Totally worth Now it. we arrive at the part of the ceremony where the grooms will give oaths to one another. Yep. Which of you is going first? Nazir. All right, the floor is yours. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Hang on. I gotta find mine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Should made sure to get this off my laptop last night. <laughs> so I was like, oh, crap. Nazir draws uh, his scimitar and he says, uh, Benedict, will you offer your blood for our bond? He'll hold his hand out. Nazir lifts up the scimitar, cuts a, cuts a line across his hand. He doesn't even flinch. And then he hands the uh, the scimitar to uh, Benedict. He takes the blade and uh, repeats the question to Nazir. Nazir, will you bleed for our bond? About that time, there the two of you are focused on each other at the front of proceedings here, but there is a sort of like hushed gasp across the crowd. Looking back to the gangplank near to where Tenacity is seated... You watch as the for the first time in possibly decades, Captain Eyes makes his way up onto the minnow, stooped forward, leaning his weight on a heavy cane, with a black cloak covering most of his features, and his scraggly hair falling over him like a waterfall. He just takes his seat quietly next to Tenacity, and when he looks up, he's wearing his smoke black glasses. And he Nazir kind of smiles. He he's he's kind of starstruck, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then looks back at Nazir and uh goes, Oh right, and uh draws the blade of the scimitar across his palm. And then takes uh takes Benedict's uh blooded hand into his and and uh pulls him close. And they embrace. Okay. Yay. Well, that's your vow. <laughs> yeah. I wrote something, and now I feel Aww. like... Not I like the picture of Nazir standing there, just bleeding from his hands as the captain's slowly making his way up to his chair. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, Merling Sam turns to Benedict to speak his piece. Oh, hold on. Why are people messaging me right now? Because it, it's Sunday, and that's what happens with D and D. You just get random DMs all through your game. I usually get a couple. <laughs> it was just treble. This guy. So, this guy. So Benny uh, takes out a parchment, and he uh, 
rolls it to the front and looks it in his ear. And then he looks down at the parchment and kind of tucks it back in his pocket. And uh, he says, he speaks from his heart. He, here we go. <laughs> uh, I didn't think much of the future. Never did, really. I always thought I was a spectator of my own years that marched countlessly by one by one. I'd live a long, uneventful life, and that'd be it. I didn't think that there would be any weight to my best friend's words. She found her calling in fortune-telling. I didn't believe her when she told me my destiny was written a consolation that had yet to come to be. Even when every year on my birthday she would repeat it again and again and again. Four hundred times. <laughs> and I didn't think that after that many years living alone on a little island chain in the midst of the southern seas that I'd ever find a reason to live. And when I left my homeland in search of an answer, I didn't think I would actually find it. I didn't think much of anything when I was condemned to the Shadowlands, and I don't know what kept me going for a decade of slavery other than being too stubborn to give up and lay down and die. And when they threw you in the cell next to mine, blood pouring from the wound on your head, I didn't think you'd let me try to help you. I didn't think I could save your life. I didn't think that Ostrom would ever answer my prayers. And when it became clear that you'd pull through, I didn't think you'd express your gratitude with an uppercut so hard that I saw stars for hours. They were your stars. <laughs> the ones I'd spent centuries looking for. Aww. I didn't think you'd open up to me those years we were enslaved, toiling in the fields, the mines, wherever they'd send us. And, and when I took the lashes in your place the first time, I didn't expect you to say thank you. I didn't think any of this would happen, or could happen, to see it, to see in your eyes that spark that burned where it was just black and once dead, to see it burn as bright as the moon whenever we had that moment together alone, and when they came to take you away from me, I didn't think I would survive without you, and, and he starts to cry, uh, and when they returned for me, I didn't believe it. When we set foot on the deck of the seat for the first time and were immediately sent to work, I didn't think I could protect you. And when you nearly drowned in the depths of that island grotto, I didn't think we would make it very far with our freedom. But when I witnessed your transformation, the stars that emerged upon your spirit and form every for the very first time in 499 years, I understood what I was meant to do. And... Well, I chose the worst place and time to confess my love to you, even if it was apparent all along. Those your laughs. And when I was thrown down that 300-foot shaft immediately after, I knew I couldn't die just yet. And, well, now I know. Now I know what I was looking for. When I see those tusks curl upward in the smallest of smiles, I, I know it's for me. When people question your integrity or your honor, I... I know I have to step up and be stronger for you. And when countless foes threaten your life, be they trents and shrouded in the darkness, undead amalgamations lurking in the pits of, of houses, dire sharks off the port bow, or shit, even those disgusting arachnid things that exist beyond time and space, I know we'll pull through. I know my purpose now and my place. It's at your side. Until the end of our days. Uh, I wanted to thank Captain Eyes, Tenacity, the crew of the seat, my adventuring companions, Nerium, San, and Sura. But most of all, I want to thank you, Nazir, for everything. Any false sign. Alright, is that a real wedding, wedding Raz? You could could have dialed that back a little bit. I, w I did. I kept <laughs> hey, I that have was... no plans... Beautifully said. I have no plans on getting married. This might be my only chance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I put some thought in there. Son. Put, put moves yeah. on the married man. Partway through that beautiful and eloquent oath, uh -huh. uh, you do see El Vosco hand off a brown parcel to one of the uh, one of his like hangers on one of his little minions that he's here with 
And then he surreptitiously takes his leave from proceedings. I'll let uh, Noose know. Hey, you so you send psychic word down to Noose? Yep. Uh, where's your attention at the moment? Are you watching uh, Benny throughout this speech, or are you watching Noose? I'm watching Benny. Okay. I, mean, I, I, you know, I glance over. I, I occasionally glance over to Elvosco, and once he moves, I stop watching anything else entirely, and I'm just captivated by the speech. So, if you're captivated by the speech, then you don't see anything Noose does. Yep. Uh, yeah, Large Tom is at the ceremony in the audience, and he is he is bawling. <laughs> Aww. So is Benny. Is it- He's a big marshmallow. I think next we do the part where Peachberry throws a fireball at Benny again. That was pretty fun. That was fun. Uh, Merlin Sam steps forth. At this time, it is tradition. Uh, amongst pirates, cutthroats, and ne'er-do-wells to offer tribute. And in this fashion, the grooms have a gift for each other and have each named members of our fine upstanding community which elicits laughter from the assembled to place gifts upon their table. And he gives the two of you leave to begin this. I got to go look at who I asked. Well, the two of you have gifts for each other first. Yeah. And Nazir's was not ready because he didn't have time to finish prepping, uh, uh, did uh, finish prepping leather working so he just kind of very very embarrassedly takes a leather uh, takes a, a leather scrap and kind of just ties it around uh, uh benedict's wrist okay you were, uh, you were banking on having that skill training i didn't expect this to go that quickly yeah uh, yeah f- flashback and benny reaches for his pocket and there's nothing there uh at the start, you asked if we had like a, something if we wanted to do something during the preparations, and I said I wanted to look for a magical item. Mm-hmm. It's it costs 100 GP. I don't know if that affects my ability to search for it, but that would have been what I would have given him is the pipe of smoke monsters. I was don't know if so- I could find. Was this something you bought bought out of the ship store? No, I would have. I wanted to look around the Covenos last time we were here, but you told me it takes time. Oh yeah, it takes time to. To procure a magical magic. item, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I didn't know if I had time to do that beforehand. We just sort of got wrapped up in stuff, so. You could have done we it. Just, we could just give each other nothing and then get the items later. <laughs> like, that's okay. And then as far as the Zir goes, you could hire a leather crafter to have completed that work for you. Nah, okay. it's gotta be his, right? Like, uh, I, well, I I, yeah, I kind of wanted it to be my own thing, but. Yeah. We'll just skip this part. Okay. <laughs> So you give each other a leather scrap and a nothing? <laughs> a future gift. Okay. Well, I'll just pack I'll pack his pipe for him. Do IOUs? Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that the disaster was entirely of our own doing because we just didn't get our gifts done in time. Right. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> uh, the next person to step up with a gift is Schmidt Soft Iron. He presents you with a short gold-plated rod that is radiating some enchantment magic. And it will uh, give off a faint humming vibration whenever it detects gold within a vicinity. And it currently is very faintly humming because Schmidt Softlayer is wearing gold. Mm -hmm. The object itself is not made of gold. It has gold plating, but it will go inert if there's no other gold around. Okay. Charles Chasm steps forward and presents you, looking incredibly out of place. No idea why he's been given this position in this ceremony. Uh, So he he, he whipped up some just last minute thing that he managed to find. He presents you with a folding puzzle box that is similar to, but legally distinct from, a Rubik's Cube. Uh, Gary steps up with an unopened bottle of Zadzerbrow. That he's Man, preserved I'm from the party excited last about that. Uh, Son, you're supposed to step forth here. Yeah. 
<laughs> so how does that go down? Well, Son's going to slide his way down the rigging, and then he will uh, kill, put it over in the corner, and he will pick up the massive backpack that contains the uh, hang glider. <laughs> and he just like, kind of like slams it down on the table. Okay. You you actually read the list. Well, wow. this is what you wanted, right? It was hard to find. First of all, I had to figure out what it was. And second of all, I had to find someone to make one. Well, I guess we're going back to that island, huh, Nazir? I guess. Uh, Nazir's unnamed NPC tobacco dealer As presents Benny's, Benny's <laughs> unnamed NPC tobacco dealer uh, presents you with a silver-plated cigarillo holder. And then... Maribel Trastyova stands up and approaches the gift table, holding a small, cheap-looking wooden box. Stands before the grooms, holding it in his, I cannot stress this enough, massively violent-looking claws. And kind of holds it out expectantly before the two of you. This is not the man that you asked to present a gift at your ceremony. Uh, I mean, he's not going to embarrass them. No. Yeah, he's in his ear. We'll, we'll take the take the box, okay, and then open it. Inside, very conspicuously made out of Drake leather, are two eye patches. And he stands Kurt silent for a moment, waiting for his gratitude. Kurt, not of appreciation. He gives you a knowing and somewhat sinister half of a nod and then turns and goes back. Uh, Sarai and Miriam, do you want to crash the gift portion of the ceremony? Now's the time to do it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would prefer to give my gifts in... Uh, private company? Uh, for, yeah, private company. You go in for the ceremony. Yeah. So Sarai, Merling Sam steps forth to go to the next part of the ceremony and here's you slithering up the aisle. Yep, she she slithers up with a a little box. I guess not little, well, you know, like a kind of the size of a box you might find like a nice shirt in, maybe. Uh, so she slides over the box and she offers it up to Benny and says, "Benny, I made this for you." He looks at Nazir and. I, I don't know if Benny would be, like, white as a sheet or, like, kind of, like, ooh, like, somewhere in between. And he'll open it. Inside is a beautiful cloak made of shedded snakeskin. Mm. <laughs> From her own tail. He's going to realize what that means, and that's actually really thoughtful. Now a part of you will be with him forever. That's gross. <laughs> I love Benny's ability to always see the good side of everything. <laughs> yeah, if and you turn your, around, I can I can put it on your armor. <laughs> Miriam, uh, and, so, <laughs> Miriam and Son like exchange looks. So, uh, Benny's Fun gonna whis Benny's gonna whisper to uh, Sarah, uh, the captain's here, and I'm wearing his flag on my back. Sarah looks utterly dejected, but nods. <laughs> Sorry, in the hierarchy of Sarah versus Captain, uh, Sarah's the next rung down. I wonder how many more of these disappointments Sarah can accept before she finally snaps. <laughs> it actually turns evil. <laughs> Wait, she hasn't snapped already? I thought this was the result. <laughs> <laughs> She'd long gone since we met her, and now she's just kind of like, I'm gonna tear parts of my body off and give it to him at the wedding. At this, you'll love it. Merling Sam calls the, the the assembled back to attention with a big finale of. Uh, so, are you guys exchanging rings, or is that the blood ceremony standing in for that? They kind of blood uh, ceremony is in for that. We don't need more rings. That's a human yeah culture thing. Okay. We've already yeah. exchanged rings. So what do you do? What's what's planned for the big finale to let everybody know it's time to stand up and and and, and applaud, and move on to 
the reception? Uh, we kiss. All right. <laughs> yeah. Who gets dipped? That's a good question. Answer the man. Benedict. <laughs> so there's whooping and hollering and uh, much applause and some whistles. And then a loud, terrible crashing sound from the back where the musicians are. Pantaloons, once again, done up in his glamour, where he's wearing the ill-fitting dress with the drill hair. Oh no, where did he get it? <laughs> leapt up onto the pipe organ. The organist sitting there, completely dumbfounded. Pantaloons cries out, Okay, real music now! And then pulls out his accordion. Oh boy. Everybody has a chance to stop him. No. Not no, at all. No, this is this is his this, show. This is it. This is happening. The wedding is over. We've kissed. This is all icing. I've also gone ahead and made sure I had Pantaloons' spell save DC handy. Oh, is this that weird spell that we don't know what it does? <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's get a, a wisdom saving throw from everybody. How long does Bless last? Oh, one minute. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Bless is over. And I'm going to roll just a couple of throws for the audience. Oh, is this a go. charm oh, effect? Uh, yes, it's a charm effect. Uh, uh, if you're within 10 feet of Benny, you're immune to this effect. Okay. Oh, I, oh, okay. I'm assuming I would be within 10 feet. If not, I'll roll. You're part of the party. Yeah. You're right. part of the wedding party, so. And yeah, Son and Sarah both just approached. Your so. DC is uh, 15. I pass. Okay. Uh, if I'm not within 10 feet of Benny, that is a 13. So Sarah fails. Am I with. Are you considering me within 10 feet? You were during the wedding party, so yeah, you'd be up there. Okay. All right. So That's I'm fine. just. I'm You're immune. immune. I wish I was in the wedding party. About half of the assembled fail, including Large Tom and Gary. Gary probably failed on purpose, knowing him. Uh, are afflicted with a version of hideous laughter. Just this insane, maniacal cackling falls over the crowd for the duration of tan Pantaloons playing. Uh, it only lasts for a couple of minutes. Dude, that sounds awesome. But after that, the organist wrangles pantaloons away and that's about the time where Large Tom ducks out of the ceremony to head back to the ship. The start of the reception, you guys come out and make your announcement uh, that there will be cake and victuals and more booze. That's where Hashmore makes... Nazir, make sure to set aside the cake, uh, a slice of cake for large Tom. Before before we get, actually go, like on the way, Miriam's going to stop them and give them her gift. Well, I'm assuming the reception's happening like here. Yeah. Oh, on yeah. the. But I mean, like, like before, like we cut the cake or whatever. Yeah, so. go ahead and do that then. That's silly. Uh, yeah, Miriam hands you both a fine mahogany box. Mm hmm. And she. Watch it. She watches you expectantly. <laughs> Open the box. Inside the box, or there are each five sapphire tokens in the shape of an oleander flower. Which, by the way, the scientific term of is nerium oleander. They are incredibly poisonous flowers, by the way. I, I <laughs> looked them up. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. So five each sapphire tokens, and nerium tells you they're each good for one entirely truthful answer from her with no complaints weaseling she will just tell you the answer and then she says these rights are not transferable and she turns around and she walks away that is extremely thoughtful of her <laughs> that's the best gift ever that's not yeah. a little bit weird i wrote it in italics hers is the only gift i wrote in italics okay <laughs> that is legitimately the most valuable thing Miriam could give you. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the, truth. Yeah. the other gifts you receive 
the other notable gifts. I mean, everybody has little trinkets and things they put on the table. Uh, Sweetie Bird doesn't present you with anything. Does she put us on her feet? No. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to bring it up. Uh, Merlin Sam produces uh, a very nice looking uh, steel goblet. What he refers to as rust proof iron. It's a magical device. It's ornate. It has the symbolism of osprum around the top edge. It tells you it's a desalination goblet. If you dip it into the sea and draw it forth, the water inside will be potable for drinking, cooking, bathing, uh, whatever use you have for it. Wow. Impressive. Thank you. That's incredibly useful to a pirate. El Vosco is no longer at the ceremony by the time you guys, by the time, by the time the ceremony ends. Uh, but he presents a box of what's called greenberry stints, which is a form of middlingly expensive, fancy tobacco. And then Hashmal Legrato and his trophy wife, Penelope, Give their leave to their man, Janelle Drycloak, who's the guy who was showing his ass out here and almost got himself killed that you prevented. Yeah. Uh, Drycloak stands, wearing his full regalia, over to a table in the corner of the room. And when he pulls the tablecloth off of it, it is a wooden crate filled with doves. Which he opens, and then these doves are horrified completely. There's no sky. You're in this weird magic (laughs) dome. So these doves have nowhere to go. They're swirling. They're trying to land back on the ship. People are... Sh- it's a shit show. Literally because they're shitting everywhere. Yeah, they'll, do, they'll also do that, right? Yeah. This is after the fireball happened. And Syrah's yeah. weird-ass thing, which made everybody uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. Here's my leavings. <laughs> Uh, oh no. Who are you sending to run Large Tom his cake? I can go. So Miriam's going to run Large Tom his cake. Miriam. I, I'm his mate or whatever anyway. So Miriam yep. leaves the reception as you guys are having fun and the cake gets cut and everything. First of all, everybody except Miriam, I need a, a constitution saving throw. I, I, don't diabetes. Ten, I don't know who's within 10 feet of me. So. DC's only 12. Whoever you want. You I passed. Uh, pass. Okay. This is your pet. Okay. Syrah? Um, that's pass. Yeah. All right. Some of the NPCs and other well-wishers here did not pass. I have a dog underneath me. It's preventing me from doing anything. Hold on. <laughs> Go away. No. Not so easy, is it, huh, Brick Road? <laughs> it is for me. My dog only weighs 12 pounds. Uh, Mine weighs significantly more than that. I just put that my, is zero to yours. I just put my boot to his ass and he moves. Uh, something about the combination of green tea flavoring and bizarre multicolored uh, sprinkles that Rondel was able to produce or able to source produces a magical effect that will be impossible to replicate. So anybody who failed that saving throw for the duration of the reception is under the effects of fairy fire. Awesome. So yeah, half of your attendees are glowing in multicolored fey magic. Ronald has no idea what happened, had no idea the sprinkles were magical. That's kind of cool. And now you wish wish I could go back and fail the save. But you can't. Your wedding day is ruined. The last time I failed a save on cake, though, my head would have separated from my my body. That's true. So you can see why I'm a little bit uh, gun shy. Miriam. Yes. Large, you actually run into Large Tom on your way back to the ship. Looks like he's hurriedly coming into the Covnos. He's also drenched head to toe because he was out in that storm that is just getting blacker and meaner by the moment. Yeah. Uh, he approaches you, wringing the like water out of his necktie. We have a problem. What is the problem? <sighs> Double Al got focused on his own work and 
wasn't paying attention and Nisbeth is gone. She was not in the brig when I arrived on the ship. Okay. Uh, Who is guarding her? Double Al was supposed to be, but he's a flighty gnome and he was alone on the ship and he thought he had more important stuff to do. Okay. Double Al, by the way, had arrived at the reception shortly after Tom left, so he's there to yell at now. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. Tenacity and Captain I mean, Eyes have taken their leave by this point. Right. Did we did we get to say thank you to them? Or Yeah, if you want to. Benny yeah, would say I, thank you to both of them. Yeah, absolutely. You get a curt nod from you. the captain and a scowl from Tenacity. Benny will remember that. Kind of like jokingly, I guess. Large Tom looking down at Miriam is, is that my cake? Uh, yeah, she, she hands it to you. Uh, I enjoy your cake. And then she uh, starts to... So what is the time frame? Like, how long between the thing? Like, I'm assuming she could be anywhere. Tom left like, towards, like, at the end of the ceremony. Double Owl mm-hmm. arrived maybe 20 minutes, half an hour or so later. So it's a ways uh-huh. into the reception. Because, I mean, Tom had to go all the way out to the ship, then all the way back. Right. So. Uh, Niriam is going to rapid fire uh, send... Um, going to send she's going to use the sending spell and she's going to send son a message basically saying nisbeth is out uh, i will immediately communicate that telepathically with each of the party members in the reception okay uh basically it's double it's double owl's fault double owl's glowing by the way and examining his half uneaten piece of cake like very interesting mysterious i'm going to uh pick up a flagon of whatever the nearest ale is and leave. Okay. Uh, the second I'm going to she, start searching the covenants. The second thing she's going to do is she's going to say she's going to on the off chance that she will answer. Uh, Miriam's basically going to say I don't expect you to answer but the Golden Claw wanted to capture you so if he has you let me know. Otherwise, you don't have to answer. She can answer 25 words or less? Yeah. She only needs five. Fuck all the way off. Gotcha. Uh, so San is uh, going to start responds. Uh, message share, taking a look. Uh, San, go ahead and give me your, your shiny new investigation check. You got it. I think I have an idea, too, of something to do. Yeah, if anybody else has a, has an idea they want to, uh, just go ahead and yeah. chime off. That's an eleven on investigate. Eleven, okay. Do I remember something that something specific enough to locate with locate object uh, that Nisbeth was wearing on her person? I mean, she was just wearing her standard clothes. Can I describe that to the best of my ability and cast a spell? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. So yeah. I, okay. Okay. So, uh, I am locating Nisbeth and her clothes, I guess. Okay. Are they within a thousand feet? Uh, they are, actually. Uh, the, the breeches you saw her wearing last when you were in the brig are over by the guard tower somewhere. And so, uh, Sarah was doing what? Well, if Vinny was able to find a relocate object, then I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, what were you Is the her? object currently moving? No, it was just sitting there. Okay. Uh, then I tell Nazir. I think I sense her. She's by the guard tower. Well, it would be, it would be gauche for the, for the, for the two of us to leave our own party. He'll turn to uh, San and Saran and say, "You do you?" Oh, San's not here. San slipped out to to start searching. Oh, okay. Well, they'll turn to Saran and say, uh, do you want to look? Yeah. He'll tell her where. Saran, are you Sorry. trained in Arcana yet? Or are you still working on it? Uh, she has investigation, but not Arcana. Well, I didn't ask about investigation, did I? Okay. You did not. 
put myself on the map here. Sarah. In this area over here of the Kovnos, kind of in this cover of trees here, there's a laundry area where uh, people staying at the boarding house or even sleeping upstairs at the inn here will come out. Uh, empty wash bucket, I guess filled with some quantity of rainwater that filled up with before this magical dome got put into place. And empty clothing line. Laying on the ground in the area, you find the clothes that you recognize Nisbeth was wearing. She came ashore and changed. Clearly. Yeah, she will mutter and pick up the clothes. And is there any any signs of dark elf footprints or tracks? Give me a survival check. Okay. Oh, that is a 16. 16. You find some footfalls in the area, but you couldn't swear that they were Nisbets. And this is a place that people come pretty much every morning to do some washing, usually. So it's not possible to find footfalls. And after you leave the area, like if you go back off towards the wilds out behind the building, yeah. then you're getting to the point where you're outside the realm of the dome and finding tracks in this storm is not going to be possible anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, will. And she will take the clothes oh. and go back to the party, I guess. Okay. How big is the dome? Does it cover the entirety of the Covenos? Most of it, yeah. It's pretty big. I, Damn near. I, I thought it was like just right around locally on the boat. So that was that big. Yeah. You're taking the clothes back, right? Yeah. Okay. I need a dexterity saving throw from you. Oh, ma- uh, the traps are. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, there's the trap. So is, is it a magic effect? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. It is stupid magic, yes. Well, this that's is good. Big boy magic. That's kind of magic. Uh, Dex, that's a 14. 14. I'm only going to apply half this damage to you, even though you failed to save, because you're not the direct target of the spell. It's also not really a spell. Uh, 16 points of lightning damage. As suddenly, the dome above you fails, and a lightning strike engulfs the entirety of this guard tower. Just blasting it in all directions, setting it aflame. While you were in the area, you could hear Arcanus up there maintaining the spell, bellowing out the magic words of his ritual. After that flash, you hear him no longer, and the whole dome fails. The storm rolls in. Off in the distance, where some of the ships are moored, uh, you see the clouds part, revealing the bright sky beyond. And through them sails a ship that... I'm going to let you make a history check. You're the only person who can make this history check. So it's kind of fortuitous they sent you out here to do this work. This was supposed to not (laughs) be revealed yet. Well, I rolled a two, which becomes a three. I mean, you're picking yourself... You're you're picking yourself up off the ground. You've just been blasted with lightning. Uh, Arcanus and the other guardsmen are in the rubble somewhere. You know, you know what, Brick? Yep. Just because you said it wasn't going to happen yet. <laughs> I'm going to spend four blips and make that an auto success. All right. Bless you. This is my, this is my <laughs> stupid blip expenditure for the campaign. You Bless see something you. that excites terrifies and confuses you you're picking yourself up you're drenched in this storm the clouds part and this ship sails out on the water towards the covenos you have to blink a few times to process what you're seeing the iconography on it uh the adornments of the vessel the figurehead on the front of the ship and even the the flags, the banners that are being flown, which you can see because they're in a bright sunlit spot, is all iconography of ancient Hyanti history. Snake Empire from like the, the, the peak of their time on this planet. Here's what's very bizarre. The Yanti at no point in their civilization had a seafaring element to their empire. 
They didn't build boats. They didn't sail the oceans. You're, what, you're seeing like a, a Yanti war galleon sail out of this hole in the clouds towards the Kovnos. Uh, that's not unusual at all. No, it's actually very unusual for all the reasons I just specified. Yeah. Yeah. How far away is it, roughly? So it, there's nowhere to dock at the Kovnos proper, so it's going to have to weigh anchor out at sea. Uh, but it, it doesn't look like it's going to get any closer than any of the other ships out there. Remember, it takes about 10, maybe 15 minutes to row a, a, a jolly boat back and forth. Uh, so I will book it back to the party. Okay. She will. Uh, who's she going to grab? Son, you're also out and about at the time. Yeah. So you see this bright flash engulf the area of the guard tower, and then you see the clouds part in the distance and a ship you don't recognize rolling in. Is that basically like. Is the timing on that such that I think it's not just a coincidence the ship arrives at the same time the lightning comes down? The lightning struck first, then the clouds parted, then the ship sailed through. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to rush to the guard tower, see if there's anybody there I can help. Uh, so the guard tower, there were two guardsmen. Let me find their names here. Uh, Benedict and Orcface. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Orcface is dead. Oh. And Benedict is, he was, a, Benedict's a loxodon. He's an elephant man. He is badly injured from the fall. You also find uh, Arcanus, Grox Arcanus. His ritual has failed. The storm is now rolled in. He's amongst the rubble, and he's also fairly badly injured. It also looks like the magic is taking a deep toll on him. Uh, I'm going to do what I can to free them from the rubble. Okay. So I don't have any like, healing. Where, where did I meet Large Tom at, just so I know where I'm at? Uh, on the way back to the ship. So you're probably coming up, up around this north bend, perhaps. Or you can be wherever you want to do whatever you want. I mean, you like if I was on the way back when, uh, you know, when the lightning struck, I would have run back to where the lightning hit. You would have made it back to the boat with Lars Tom before that happened. So you would have seen it from the boat with everybody else. Okay. Because you would come back and deliver, or you would deliver that message psychically on your way back, and that's when San slipped away. Mm-hmm. And Benny cast a spell. Gotcha. So now that like the storm has put a kind of dampener on thing and has ruined what's left of the cake, the party's kind of breaking up on its own. The reception kind of ending wet and limply. And what's next? Uh, Sarah will grab the Zier because he seems like the competent one. <laughs> uh, he definitely is the competent one. Is here. Back to the ship. Quick. Imposters what, what? are approaching. Imposters? What do you mean? <laughs> the Anti Empire doesn't have ships. She'll relay what she saw. Okay. Benedict, come with us. Mm -hmm. oh. He's still eating the soggy cake. <laughs> <laughs> Party's over. I, I thought it went great. No, I mean, it did fine until this rain came in. Yeah. What Nerium. happened to Grox? <laughs> Nerium basically says that the correct answer is yes, dear. Yes, dear. Sorry. Very important question. Is Large Tom glowing purple? He's glowing multiple colors. This is a form of fairy fire that is more advanced than the actual spell. And no, Ronald yeah. will never, never be able to replicate this. Oh, he, he really gave it a 13 out of 10. Well done, Ronald. <laughs> so you guys are making your way back to the to the deceit? Yeah, at the uh, very I'm least. Following, or... I'm following Syrah. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of following yeah. Syrah at this point. Son, you get the two survivors up and limping. Mm -hmm. And as you're uh, taking them back, the rest of your party is approaching, heading back towards where the jolly boat is tied off to go back to the deceit. Looking out into the water at this point, as you all are kind of reconvening up here close to D1, uh, an envoy from the Yanti ship has been sent out. A rowboat, 
of slaves, four on a side, rowing it towards you. Standing at the front of it, a tall Yanti figure. Uh, hard to see details at the moment because of the distance and the darkness, but the darkness is subsiding very quickly now. The storm is beginning to clear. The clouds in the sky are beginning to thin out and float away. Ra? Relatives of yours? Yeah. They shouldn't be. They're either imposters or trouble. Or Kalos knows Los Dos. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, your your options are kind of wait on land for them to come forth or to go out in the jolly boat anyway and risk a confrontation as you're rowing out. Are the slaves wanty or are they something else? You're too far away and it's too dark to really tell. They're, they must be humanoid slaves because they're working the oars, but more than that, you don't know from this distance. I mean, they might not even be slaves. I'm just saying that because, I mean, they're yanti and, you know, it kind of kind of goes without yeah, saying. Nazir, Nazir, we're, Nazir's we're content to, let, to wait and see who this person is. Yeah, we're all Sarah's slaves in her head. Correct. So, uh, yeah, I'd wait. Okay. So this 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 rowboat comes forth, and a lot of you are standing on the end. Do either of you give healing to the other two survivors? Let's start there. Like yes, Benedict. absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you heal the other Benedict, who I swear that character was named before <laughs> he's made his character. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just dump all my lay on hands and a few spell slots for cure wounds arcanus because he's an egomaniac takes credit for the lightning strike forgive me my friend i do not know my own strength well save it just next time you're gonna be the target save it Sa save it just lay right real still a trumpet blares out from the approaching rowboat at this point, you can start to see details. The man standing in the front, very tall, yan -ti, has the head of a snake, but from the neck down, body chiseled like a Greek god. Wait, wait, Muscular. wait. Muscular. Yeah. Does he have a wig? No. <laughs> snake head. Neither do you. That's just... That's, that's, <laughs> that's just mott. <laughs> that's just mott. <laughs> But other than that, his his figure looks like that of just the, like an ideal like chiseled human figure, uh, bronze skin, uh, wearing a toga tied off over one shoulder, cloth of gold trimming, with a long sword hanging upon one side, quiver of arrows slung across his back, with a fist clutched over his heart as he approaches and watches the group of you. You hear trumpets uh, blare out from two slaves behind him. A hobgoblin kneels down in front of this uh, cut masculine fi figure. The man puts a foot on the slave's back, steps up, puffs out his chest, calls out in a booming voice. Long have we sailed from the Zazamir Empire. To seek the blood of our fallen empress. At last, and he holds out his arms towards the group of you. Our search has ended. Thank God. This so will slither forward in, into the obvious trap. What? Okay. Like, Nirium, Nir Nirium lets out a curse and hands uh, Nazir <laughs> ten, ten gold. <laughs> So the rowboat comes up. Lost track, yeah. The rowboat yeah. comes up to the side to where it's shallow enough that you can wade out a bit. And slaves step one at a time to lay this cushioned platform upon which this Yanti steps so that he does not have to step into the water. They bear it upon their shoulders as they're standing in this chest high surf. And he steps forward. He glares at everybody approvingly one by one. Who steps forward or slithers forth to meet him, I should ask? <laughs> Sra does. So Sra, I mean, you... I'm... Yeah, Nazir's I... stepping forward, too. Like, who the hell is this guy? So Nazir yeah, I'm not going to miss this. Nazir, yeah. is... Nazir and Sra and Niriam are stepping forth. We... Do we all just step forth? Like, we're all interested, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Who would be the first one that when he steps onto land? It's agreed. Probably Sarah. Like this is Sarah's show. Yeah, this seems like Sarah's kind of kind of show. We're not going to deny that. <laughs> two of his like, this is two of his sentries get into the water to uh, arrive at land about the time he does. One is a snake man like Sarah is, so slithering out into the water. Uh, except he's got four arms, two from his shoulder and then two from lower on his chest. The other is a more or less humanoid looking woman with Medusa hair. Her hair is made out of snakes and she has solid red eyes. Yanti come in a lot of freaky forms. They're a weird peoples. Yeah, they, they, they're a weird bunch. Sarah, the three Yanti arrive at the shore. Uh, the tall man looks down remove the worm and they step forward to shove you aside uh she will shove them back if they try that let's let's make some shoving checks you need to roll at disadvantage because you've got two people shoving you aside uh you've got to beat a 15 uh it's just a strength check acrobatic sh- straight strength uh straight strength uh, disadvantage is an 18. An 18? That's not bad. So, they don't manage to shove you aside. You manage to kind of hold your ground as the man, the, 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 the chiseled snake man, steps right past you, steps before Nazir, drops to his knee, holds up his hands, palms up in front of you. Your Majesty, it is an honor. At Wait, this, what? the other two snakemen flanking him who are wrestling with Sarah similarly genuflect, as do the slaves still in the water. Give me my ten gold back. <laughs> <laughs> Nazir does not hear uh, um, Nerium when she shouts that out. Cox his head to one side. Wait, I, I'm not. I'm a man, you know. I'm not an. I'm not an. Em- I'm, I'm, I'm sure as hell not a snake woman. You are blood of our empress, and we have sought many long moons. Which, he doesn't move his head up or his hands. May I rise, your majesty? Yeah. Who the hell are you? And he gets up, and only after he's standing back at his full height do the other snake people and their slaves... Uh, which is just a hodgepodge of humanoid slaves. The kind of, like, maybe one out of a Southling raid. Uh, probably no halflings or dwarves, because they wouldn't be very good cushion bearers. They they would drown. <laughs> They're too short. <laughs> I am Malison Errant, Threskis. And he pounds his fist against his chest. And I would be honored to be named the first of your crown's guard. In your confusion, he turns back to Sarah. Yeah, he, he's extremely lost. He's giving oh, Sarah a bit of a stink eye. He says, have you already named this one? Watch your mouth, insolent fool. At that, he reaches for his sword, which standing in the Kovnos is not good. Uh, he, Nerium steps forward and claps her and says, Oh, so it's so good to finally meet you. We've heard so much about you. Please, please, please calm down. You step forward where? In between him and Sarah? Yes. I need... Let's roll initiative. This is about to get real violent. Yes. Uh, How so. does the Covenos look on to, like, you know, potential invaders getting attacked versus, like, you know, people who are members of the Covenos? I guess we'll find out. Legally. Okay. Oh, I have advantage. I have the cloak. <laughs> picture in picture oh uh oh yeah i, I should do that. you know what i will uh i will i will jump on the initiative grenade today okay I wasn't really expecting initiative yeah nor i but uh i did say i don't know how what many wedding times, did you think we were going yeah. to i'm gonna ruin this wedding and none of you thought you were gonna ruin this. <laughs> i'm gonna step away for one minute so i can refresh my yeah. drink i'll be right back Mm-hmm.
I, I mean, if you're gonna, this, though. If you're going to ruin it by changing up who I married. I don't know. The wedding is already gone. I think it went fine. Well, everybody kept saying that there was a bride. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. That's 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 Sarah's life in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. What they have done is you were a woman and they have stuck they have stuck a snake woman brain in your orc body. You are the you're the orc with a screaming brain. That's cursed. Why would you say that? I guess some more stuff happened inside the Shadowlands than you thought. Yeah, no kidding. Right? All right. Is everybody confused yet? Absolutely. Who's at the top of my order? Nerium. Uh, that would be Nerium, followed by San. So, Nerium, you stepped in between the Malice and Errant and Syrah. Yes. And what are you doing? I'm going to try and persuade him to, uh, like, this is not a, uh, basically, so I'm going to make the argument this is not a good first impression. I want to remind you, you're not wearing the choker. I know. Okay. Uh, it's not a good first impression for your, uh, for meeting your liege. Okay. Uh, Do you I'll really want to? I'll let you make a persuasion check. Mm -hmm. uh, DC is going to be thirty. <laughs> this man is a zealot, and he has just been insulted. I th I think Nerium has. Odds to hit thirty. If anyone can do I it, I think she can hit a thirty. I need a nineteen. On your die. On my die. So that's probably. Oh well, that's a sixteen. I came close. That I did come. Real close. wheel or woe today. I have woe today, unfortunately. Miriam, you yeah. do have blips. Ah, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> there are blips uh, in, the, in the tank. Let me think. Else was I, if I had wheel, I would give you wheel. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like literally at twenty seven. So, uh, uh, I'm going to yeah, I'll, I'll use full flips. It's fine. All right. Yeah, because this man was about to draw his weapon when you stepped in the way. He was about to just backhand you to the ground. Instead, he stays his hand for a moment. Without glancing over at Nazir. Your Majesty? She's Nazir. with me. When you say she, are you referring to Nerium or Sarah? Yes. <laughs> yes, both of them. At that, takes his hand off of his weapon. So, Your Majesty. It pains me to suffer insults to your person while in your presence. But if it is your wish, I will endure it. And then we can come off initiative. He is not going to try to behead Sarah. I'm not. And you would do so gladly. I'm not totally convinced he would win that fight either, by the way. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. No. I was mostly trying to protect the NPC's life. I mean, one on one against Sarah, I think she wins, but she probably limps away. But I think if he throws down with all of you here, he's just toast. Sky toast. And that's why it's funny. Sky toast. <laughs> so things are very tense no, the, at the no, moment. No, Sky toast is Grox Arcanus. Uh, so the first order of business uh, do you name Malice and Errant as the first of your crowns guard? First thing Nazir kind of Nazir start finally gets finally gets his 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 brain underneath his feet. That that, that makes sense in my head. Shut up, um, and says, uh, "They they they are they they are with they're with me, and you would uh, you would do well to uh, afford them their respect, afford afford them their respect that that they're due." Your Majesty, he says, seems not to quite understand your reasoning, but he's not going to gainsay you either. And certainly, 
I, I will name you my first crowns guard. At that, he claps his fist back over his chest. He says, it is my honor. I served your mother, the Empress, for many long years. It is my greatest shame that I was not at her side when she... I'm sorry, Your Majesty. It pains me to inform you that your mother has died. It was an assassination. We were unable. And at that, he goes back to his knee and presents you his neck. And if you strike me down for it, I will take my punishment. First you beg first you beg to become my guard, and then you offer me your life? Your Majesty, I beg for no man, not even you. Do I have to ask the obvious what the what in the hells is going on? I don't think anybody knows what's going on. Yeah, no. <laughs> Nazir is very like lost, that. but he's trying to he's trying to he's trying no, to this is song. Yeah, this is what song saying. Son, his mother just died. Be nice. Miriam looks at Sarah, and she looks at San. She says, "I haven't. Dis- I still can't decide if she's just fucking crazy, or." <laughs> and that's coming from me. to Sarah. Who the? Do you know who this is? Does Sarah have any idea who this is, or what banner the the what the flag is of, house of, or anything? Uh, make a history check. You recognize the iconography aboard the ship and everything as being Yanti in design, which struck you as strange. Yeah, it's only a uh, 12. But as far as the Zazamir Empire that he mentioned, you don't have any, any knowledge of. So it must be some sort of mutt empire. Also, I feel like if there was a Yanti Empire operating anywhere within 10,000 miles, Sarah would know about it. it yeah. Should. So do you strike this man dead? For No, I don't. Okay. So uh, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask the obvious question of you, uh, Stinkman. Uh, and that question is... Are you aware that this is an orc? And then she's going to gesture at Nazir. The man stands again. Your I mean, Majesty, forgive me. I am unaccustomed to answering the questions of slaves. You will answer her question. Nazir barks out a little bit, a, a little bit, a bit of a rough edge to it, to his okay. voice. And he bristles to respond. So what was Nerium's question? Like, he can tell that this, that N- the Nazir is an orc, right? So is his lord father. The, the Lady Giuliana's consort. Hrothai. They were together for many years. He was... Oh. He looks back at Nazir quizzically. Hrothai was lost in the war against the Black Arrow. Surely, your majesty, you have memory of this. I have none. I spent some years in captivity. In the shadowed lands to the west. To the southwest, rather. He looks around to the assembled party members, which includes some members of your crew who are all kind of standing there. Some still glowing from the fairy fire cake. Some with their jaws still on the ground at the extremely eventful day. So, well, there are provisions enough aboard the Jacques Talil for you and your slaves. If we shall, and he motions back towards the rowboat. Then he'll look at Nazir and say, Well, maybe we should go see what this is all about. Indeed. Strong. Did uh, Strong will slither over to his ear and put an arm around his shoulder and say, "Come on, cousin, let's go see what this is." We'll deal with that. In Captain Eyes make it back to the deceit. Yes, as far as you know, uh, Captain Eyes and okay. Tenacity—they probably took the ginger cookies and warped back. Yeah, okay. they probably. Yeah, they left early on in the reception, like they were just there for the ceremony. And he's gonna um, laugh at the fact that that Sarah is 
Nazir's cousin until it dawns on them that now they are in-laws. <laughs> and then he's just going to kind of go, oh, God. Sarah. Okay, Nazir, I don't want to get left behind, so I guess I'm offering to be your second guard whatever. Before the, before the line fills up. Ooh, can I be your Seneschal? I'm very good at it. We'll we'll deal with this later. So Saras looks at Nazir and says, Saras you know Puts her arm around Nazir, and as soon as she does, the Malice and Errant reaches for his sword, as do the other two Yanti standing next to him. Take your hand off of the Emperor, or lose it. Saraj just glares at this man and then plants a little kiss on Nazir's cheek. What's Nazir's response to this? You. <laughs> I don't you like cooties. No, I'm just kidding. It's a lot uh, of power to hold in your hand that moment when you realize, wait a minute, I could force Chris to roll up a new character right now. <laughs> I could. I really could. <laughs> Nazir shoves her arm off. She gives a little pouty face. <laughs> Seconds right after first. So traditionally, the emperor or empress uh, would nominate six able-bodied Yanti warriors as their crowns guard. It would be highly irregular for you to name anybody who's not a Yanti. When your mother, the empress, was alive, her consort was not even amongst her crowns guard for this reason. Uh, there are vaguely verified rumors that orcs amongst all of the 400,000 intelligent races that in inhabit this world, orcs have this uncommon ability to breed with anything they want to produce more orcs. So you're like a half orc. No, he's a yeah. full orc. Orcs make orcs with oh, everything yeah. full, full, except for full, humans full, full, with which they make half orcs. So it's not completely unheard of for orc stock to emerge from unions like this. Yeah, Nazir just he's he's trying he's trying to settle into it and and try and play as savvy as he can with it okay. for the time being. Orcs so, are many, orcs are virile and, and starts prolific. walking and he starts walking toward the uh, toward the rowboat. Okay. So since I have permission to ask questions, Dirium says, and you have you have orders to answer them. Uh, where is your empire located? And he kind of bristles at the question as well. Says, I'm from, and she just, uh, I, excuse me, like, excuse my, and, and she'll apologize ex when she says, excuse my ignorance. I am uh, from a, another plane of existence originally. <laughs> he says, and he directs his answer to Nazir as Nazir is stepping up. Are you like, how, how are you boarding the rowboat? Are you like step across these slave cushions? Or are you going to wade out in the water? He, he's, he, his, his natural instinct is to wade into the water and then over to the rowboat. Okay, that, so he, I will tell him to step on the slaves. Either way is going to send a strong message. It's already raining. You're already wet. That's true. Yeah. So he answers uh, Nerium's question. Uh, begging your pardon, your majesty. There was a, a coup. The empire is... Well, six ships remain, and he motions, one of which is the Jectalil. The other five search for you still. Then recall them. He, he nods. I would, your majesty, if I had the means. As to the working effects of the Empire, it shames me to say, but you lay eyes upon it now. chuckles at that <laughs> your empire is only five foot square yeah it's yeah. almost like yeah. and Nazir's got a whole boat so <laughs> Sarah, like... looking at her competition and going I can beat that <laughs> but like so uh, like so like Nerium like looks back and forth she says so like where on the map though like whereabouts where's this place located and he describes a continent you've never heard of and countries that you've never been to mm -hmm. and where was yours supposed to be Sarah? Uh, where's the wish Sarah will point to the area on the map? Do you actually have a place on the map where it is supposed to be? Uh, I do, but okay. I don't know. What the, I forget what the map looks like. Oh, you said the top right or something. Happy yeah, to that was off the top right, I think. There you go. Like, it's yeah. like, I, th I think she's like one of the Yanti from like the ones that Red had problems with. 
Oh no, she isn't. Okay. Yeah, Red and his people would have all been from the Flump of the Wild map thereabouts. Yeah. So Sarah's from across off the to the left. So over here. Yeah, it would have probably been up off in that direction, I think. Yeah. Sar yep, there's like a from... jungle valley up above northwest of the Kovnos. Ooh, I yeah. just love the idea that Red, after the campaign, ruined this empire and was like, you know what? Let's go do more. <laughs> yeah, gonna, oh. I got, uh, he just like went around and like just start. He's like knocking down Yonti empires across the globe. Is there any published like official D and D material where the Yonti Empire is still like alive and well? Because I feel like they're always in ruins. I feel like the Yonti can never keep it together. I've never heard of one. I mean, have you looked at them? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're kind of yeah, they're a little dysfunctional. So you're gonna join the the Yanti party aboard the Jacques Talieu? Yes. Who all is coming? Benny's coming. Uh, for sure. We all <laughs> Second are. Queen's card. So, Nazir, let's let's take care of this first. Who are you naming to your crown guard? You've named uh, Malin Errant Threskis. Threskis. Yeah, he'll name... Uh... Yeah, he'll name Benedict, uh, San, and uh, uh, Nerium, and then Sarah. So San, Benedict, or Benedict, then San? I guess it doesn't matter. Benedict, Benedict then San, then Nerium, then Sarah. So by Benedict, you mean the injured Loxodon who lives in the Covenos? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the sixth one. There's two Benedicts. We're inviting both. Sarai, you got named last. You're literally the only Yanti in the party, and he picked you last. She's debating if she wants to reject this offer, but... <laughs> what was the name of this uh, messenger again? I'm sorry. He's the Malicent Errant Threskis. Threskis. He is no messenger. Is... He is the emissary of... Sorry, I was... <laughs> I was naming him the messenger because I didn't expect this NPC to be important, and then I kept forgetting to write his name down. Gotcha. Yeah, Threskus. That's kind of more or less spelled how it's how it sounds. And the rest of it's his title, huh? Malice and Errant is Malice is a type of Yan T. They're they're mm -hmm. kind of uh like snake -heady. Yeah, they're the snakehead type. They're kind of like mutant bruiser types, like gladiator. Uh and mm -hmm. he, he's the biggest, baddest of them all. So you send the rest of your uh, NPC friends. Are you taking any of your crew members with you? Is this considered an Peachberry. adventure? You can take one, I'll say. That's fine. Feachberry does have that new fireball spell to show off. Yep, Feachberry does have that new fireball spell. <laughs> it's more of an exposition dump leading into the next adventure, but yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I didn't know if we were going to get to choose a person. Later. Yeah, be fair, you, you can bring Peachberry if you want. Yeah, I'll bring Peach. Yeah, Peachberry, come all <laughs> ask Peachberry to come along. So as the uh, as the slaves are rowing you back to the magnificent Yanti Galleon, uh, you, you he presses you to name the rest of the Crown Guard. Uh, he has people of his, amongst his own ranks who he would suggest, but you bypass that and you pick four of your own. Five of my own with Peachberry is the is the fifth. And and uh, and he makes six. He makes six. Okay. I mean, he would have been the. He was the first one that that I accepted, and then the other five. He does not object to any of these picks, but as he says, it is very uncommon and breaks with thousands of years of tradition to choose anyone not of the Yanzi bloodline. So he approves of Sarah, even though she's been nothing but disrespectful to him since he arrived. I think that's just a racial trait. Benny, I, Benny will pipe up and say, well, good news for you. We got married today. I'm part of your bloodline now. More or less. I mean, Sarah's kind of like a Yanti nightmare speaker, so... Then this man I've is your consort. With, I've been with this... I've been with the, the this crew for... nigh on a year now, and I trust... I trust each of them with my life. Aww. Why would I not name them my? Why would I not name them my, uh, my guard? Your Majesty, forgive me if I speak out of turn. But if I may ask, what of your bloodline? 
Have you issue? I have no... I have no... I have no children that I'm aware of. What are the odds you can make Benedict pregnant? Well, if you try hard enough and long enough, you might be able to. It's in a mis- well, word magic world. Benny, Benny yeah, I was gonna say, words about non, that. Non-zero because of magic? The wish Benny, spell exists? Benny will shrug and say, we've tried a few times. It hasn't taken yet. <laughs> what are your chances? Non-zero. Not our scene. Sorry. <laughs> Arriving back at the Jek Talil. Uh, be a blue orc. It's a large ship. It's like about the size of a war galleon. So it's about the size of the ships you guys took out in the Southern Ocean a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not armed like a war galley. Uh, there's no armaments, weapons aboard. You don't see their, their mangonels, large ballistas, anything like that. If anything, the ship strikes you as an overly sized, overly opulent pleasure bar. Mm. exactly the kind of nonsense like an empire that's way past its prime might invest in rather than uh, like protecting its holdings or providing for its people or anything like that. So I'm going to leave you with a few more factoids and then we will do the last round of like role playing with this character so you guys can get it all out of your system. And then Mm -hmm. be underway for the next adventure. So here's what you learn. Uh, Details are very thin on what happened to the Empress Galna, who he says is your mother. You have no way to verify this, by the way. As I recall, you have no memory of, of your, of your past. I have no memory of anything before the, uh, before uh, the, the wall came down. So you were told that while you were very young, while you were uh, wobbly upon your feet, there was a coup in the palace, in the Empress's palace. A year prior, uh, your father, her consort Hrothai, had led a defensive sortie against Black Arrow invaders who were incurring on some of their uh, outer territories. He thought things would be mopped up very quickly, they got a message back that they were overrun and he had been killed. And then after that, the Black Era started taking more and more of their territory. I'm going to let everybody make a history check here, please. In fact, I'm going to let Sarah make this at advantage because she is a Yanti. Got a 12. 12. 11. Oh, s- somebody can take a Bardic Inspiration die if we can do I'll that. Pick one. I just want to know what the highest number you guys manage is. Uh, 19 is is the one that's running the table. 19 is good. So Nazir. uh, He describes the attack where the Empress was killed. And he's thin on some of the details. And you realize partway through it's not because he doesn't know them. It's because this man refuses to admit it was a slave uprising. Slaves took the palace. That's what he's saying in not so many words. Part of this man's honor is the auntie case system being what it is. Like, he can't give slaves that kind of credit. They're too low of a form of life to be able to seize any level of power. And yet, this is what has happened. Uh, During the coup, you were carried away. A young wobbly child, presumably by uh, the Black Arrow. They had six ships remaining that set out in different directions, searching the seas. Uh, two of which, this one included, the Jek Talil, was equipped to travel through what he's calling storm gates that connect this ocean with other oceans. Uh, Let's get a second round of history checks. If you're proficient in Arcana, make this at advantage. Actually, Niria, make this at advantage anyway, because you're from another plane of existence. 16. 
Uh, what was this history? History got a sixteen as well. Sixteen as well. Yes, history. Benny got a twenty-two. Uh, 20, 20, nineteen. The man to beat. Uh, okay. It's a what kind of? It's history, check? but you're making this at advantage because you're from another world. Right. Uh, I have a twenty. Okay. If somebody wants to go take theirs higher, they can take a bardic inspiration die. I think a twenty-two is good. Benny got a twenty-two. So Benny, what he's describing is that this Yanti Empire. Uh, the Zazamir Empire is not on this map. It's not part of this world. It's connected to an ocean on another world entirely. And somehow the two of these Yanti ships had the technology to sail through what they're calling a storm gate from their ocean to this one. Nazir is doing his best to telepathically relay information to the rest of his teammates in between conversation. Benny, here's what's Benny. horrifying about that. The Black Arrow are an orc army situated on the continent to the west, just off of this map. Yep. If they're attacking these Yanti, that means they also have this magical technology, these storm gates. How much does Benny know about Nazir's injury? That's up to Nazir, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm going to ask Nazir. As far as... As far as Nazir knows, and as far as anybody knows, he's... Dogs. Doggos. Because <laughs> no. I know what we went over at character creation, but I don't know if Benny uh, knew no. it. Only... Only... That was yeah, Raz's yeah. first idea, anyway. No. Then Benny's just going to summarize with, wow, he really married up today. Well, <laughs> Nazir... And then, like, that's all I can really do. Nazir's own, Nazir could only say that all he remembers of his, of, of his time before coming on board the Deceit is seeing Benedict's face. That's all he could remember. And Threskis doesn't seem to regard Benedict with any more reverence than anybody else present. That's not going to bother him as far as he's concerned all of your well they're not worms anymore because they've all been promoted to your crown guard uh he doesn't approve any of that but he's not going to gainsay it either two things Again. drew them to this ocean first of all uh they have magical location they were trying to find the empress's bloodline this search has been going on for I mean, how old is Nazir? Uh, he is in his 30s now, I believe. Yeah, so this search has been going on for a few decades now. Uh, what originally drew them through the Stormgate to this ocean was the pull of a powerful artifact that he believes, and his superiors also believe, the other uh, members of the Empress's Fallen Crown Guard. Uh, this artifact contains the power to rebuild the Yanti Empire from its ashes, reclaim their territory, rebuild their palace, reinstate the bloodline as the superior force of the continent. Once they went through the storm gate and arrived here, that's when they picked up on your signal, basically. I that's, see. They spent the last few months kind of following this ridiculous line around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easy to follow. There's all these socks. Why did it take <laughs> so long? He names the artifact he's looking for. He knows it must be somewhere in this ocean. He doesn't know where or how to begin looking. He calls it the Pact of Rosiris. And Sarah, oh, you know exactly what this artifact is. Oh, is it a heart? It is. It is a human heart. That was used as a sacrifice at the beginning of a mythological Yanti empire that Sarah believes she is descended from. And you know exactly where on this map it is, because that's the that's exactly why Tenacity bought you, was to find this heart. Yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna ask how uh how aware are we of the information that was drawn from uh, that was drawn from us? I'm assuming each of you have some passive no passing knowledge of what each of these treasure boxes represent. 
Mm-hmm. But I'll leave it up to you whether you share how much detail. Well, first of all, your character might not have a lot of detail. It was up to you how much detail yeah. you had in the first place. All you had was a location and like the shape of an object. Yeah. So it's up to Sarah how much she knows and how much she wants to share. Uh, Sarah remembers everything from the Shadowlands. Mm-hmm. She just doesn't talk about it. Uh, she will point on the map and say, there. Well, they don't have a map here. Uh, she will say it's in the it's in the northeast corner of the world on the other it's on the other side of the world by that other continent north of the Tower of Eastfall. And Threska says the first respectful thing you've heard him say since you've met him. Your Majesty, your crown guard, proves her worth. If she knows the location of this artifact, we should make all haste. Indeed we should. So here's the conflict. Threskis and the Yanti Empire of Zazamir wants this artifact for the same reason Sarah wants it. However, it is unquestioningly one of the 13 artifacts that you're meant to collect for the deceit. So I'm sure this will not be a test of loyalty for any of you. Oh no, we're absolutely going to fucking steal this artifact and come back over and and find the deceit again later. I think that's exactly what I, I think that's exactly yeah. what Nazir's pl- planning right now. This may or may not end up with us returning on a ghost ship. So, I think I drew one of those at the start. It's kind of going to be Nazir's decision on how you want to pursue this artifact. Like you could give the order right now, like all right, like lower the oars let's go out and eject Talil at the moment you could tell them you know what we're working aboard the deceit here's our plans we should join forces on this you could tell them why don't you guys go fuck off somewhere we'll take care of it and let you know when it's done or anything in between i think i think uh, i i think uh i'm going to uh i i think that what we do is we uh is we we le- legitimately use these people to find this artifact, and then we steal it, take it for ourselves, and make our way back to the deceit <laughs> by a, by by our own means. Okay. That's what an evil person would think. Well, concern if they can travel between worlds through these storm gates. Will we be able to get the artifact in time before it's forever lost? If not, then we go conquer an empire on another world. <laughs> I don't see the problem. <laughs> When you when you put it that way, Benny perks up a little bit and says, "Huh." I mean, you could also just tell them to go collect the other ships, because like, they are sp- there's what six of them. So they can travel between these storm gates, but they don't have a way to communicate through them. Yeah. So so are they, basically, are they... we leave these we 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 take advantage of these guys' isolation. Is what I'm saying. So the the inspiration for these guys, believe it or not, like everything in life, was outer wilds, where like the Nomai vessels would go out and be independent of each other, but then every few oh, years okay. reconvene yeah. and share what they've learned. Mm-hmm. So they have some I kind of schedule to wilds, keep. But... Dude. Oh, you wow. You need you really to play it and stream it so I can watch it. You and Simon play wow. it together. Listen, <laughs> I have a lot of my plate right now. Well, we dump some stuff off your plate and play some outer wilds. I say this knowing full well I have an Outer Wild series that I'm supposed to be processing. Like, I, I realize that I'm the last person yeah. in the world who should be telling people play Outer Wild. I know for a fact Simon would love that game. Just having... Yeah, you know what? We, I, might, <laughs> I might have him sit down and pl- us play together or something. It's great. Because yeah, I've heard so many good things about it. Anyway, the, the Nomai in the Outer Wilds, they, they're these, these, these scientists, these explorers... And they live aboard their big generation ships. And then every mm-hmm. few decades or so, they reconvene and share all their knowledge. And they go back out again. Yeah. But they don't communicate with each other during that time, typically. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah, but no. And Nazir's tra- doing his best. He'll either he'll either do it immediately or or in order to keep up appearances. He, will, he'll, he won't bring the rest of the party fully up to speed until until he's got a moment to himself and the rest of his and the rest of his party members i'll give you that moment here aboard the jack talil if you want to just have a discussion with the group about what you might want because i need an answer to this question so i can know how to plan the adventure is what i'm saying yeah no 
yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah. The reason why the yeah, but uh, I, I just don't want the guy to overhear us plotting to you know to to to, to bilk these guys and take take them for whatever they're worth. You know, you're shown you to your get... lavish quarters aboard the vessel, and you're left alone with the rest of the party. You can have Threskis standing guard outside the door so he doesn't overhear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, take a moment with the group and decide how you want to approach collecting this artifact. Well, first and foremost, our loyalties to the seat, I assume. Yeah. 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 Still, yeah, I'm, I'm still loyal to yeah. the seat. Yeah. No, I I'm, want I'm to with... involve them. I'm with Naz. We use them to get there. We take the artifact. If we need to, we kill everybody on board and then we sell back to the seat. I, mean, I love how gung ho Sarah's like, this is not my Yanti Empire, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> this not is my not my Yanti, Yanti Empire yeah. yet. <laughs> I, uh, Benny kind of looks at Sarah and says, uh, that's. What, these foes of yours in the past? Or... <laughs> Can't you just, like, name Sarah like, your heir and then abdicate? Is that how... Is that... Why? So, Sarah, you'd have working knowledge of this better than anyone else. Uh, Yanti make a big show about, like, their bloodline and who's ruling who, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of just... Whoever assassinates the top dog gets to be the top dog. So, yeah. Nazir can probably push this emperor thing a little bit, but having found Nazir, if this Threskis Joker decides he wants to be emperor, like he now has a path for that. Yeah. Path right through Benedict. I think that they're just making their entire their entire empire weaker by this ridiculous slavery practice. I think we should sunder the chains of all the slaves on the ships, point them at their masters' throats, and then sail this ship alongside the deceit. Son, there's a reason I don't take slaves. <laughs> I thought we were your slaves. No, you're my loyal vassals. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you. And we're going to have to talk about back pay. Sarah's Sar <laughs> very progressive for a Yanti when it comes down to it. She is lawful good, after all. Yeah. <laughs> so Sans put on the table, like, okay, first we mutiny the Jectalil. Yep. Strike the, the binds on the slaves, hold these Yanti, and then we have two boats to go out and look for this. Yeah, we have, well, maybe. I mean, they'd be free people at that point, but... How yeah. many, how many, do, how many people do they have on board is my next question, and I uh, haven't had a chance to take stock of that. I would say and probably about a crew of maybe 20 or 30. You haven't seen the whole stock yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Warriors of Threskis's level, so... By which I mean, like, people at or around your class level comparable to you guys. Mm -hmm. By what you've seen, less than a dozen, surely. And then some f several dozen slaves, at least. Maybe clo even close to a hundred slaves. Because the boat moves with oars. They have an oar galley down there. They're, they're, not, they're not raising uh, sails. They have banners, but they're not raising sails. There's also the issue of if we free the slaves, how many of them are actually going to stick around and want to help yeah, we're not going to. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to. Uh, they're not where going we, to. Well, well yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's even their world. Here's the situation. These guys are just going to. Be, what, what's going to happen is we can't. We can't sail this ship. That like that's that's completely out of the question at this point because there's no there's no mast or sails for it. You could construct so, a mast with time. That's you can modify the ship. We're outside of the it. largest pirate holdout in the Eastern Sea. Here's the thing, though: we're trying to bilk these guys. <laughs> I mean, they like it's. Am I misunderstanding in that they have one of those gates that will take us to over there without having to sail? The storm gate can months. flow from this ocean to another ocean. Uh, so far, none of you have any idea how those actually work. That would be information you'd have to get first. That was actually a question I wanted to ask, is can we extort this some way? Like, can we get this technology? Not if we do a sleeve up resin right now, we can't. Indeed. Well, I mean, can we do both? One, then the other. Yeah, if we, if we bide our time and yeah. sail the ship over the like as wants. So let me start here. Let me quickly get votes for Slave Uprising. Who do I get three yays for a slave uprising? Yay. Yes. No. Nah. Eh. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant long term. No, immediately. Oh, yeah, no, you mean immediately, immediately then no. Sorry. I'm thinking in terms of no. when we play next week, what do I have to prep? No, not a slave uprising. Probably no. Though. Okay. 
I think Sorry, what we, we do is we tell Tenacity we have a lead on the uh, this item that will be gone, and then we just fucking take them for a ride. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it, that's exactly where I was going with this. And you're taking Peachberry on this adventure with you because she's been yep. named Nazir's crown guard. So, so sorry, sorry to uh, sorry to press gang Peachberry. Right. Yeah, she seems uh, very out of her element here, surrounded by I mean, snake. People. I just I just realized we just took away both of the co- of uh, the deceit's navigators. <laughs> Extended shore leave. Tenacity's a navigator. She can she can make it work. I mean, and we can, and then I can, if you want, I could like draft a message to Tenacity explaining the thing and a couple of, I, cause I've got plenty of spell slots. Okay. So two loose ends we're leaving behind in the Covenos for next week. Number one is we've decided not to make a dungeon excursion on this visit. There's just too much other stuff happening. And yeah. There's gotta, a lot of, ha- there's a lot happening here. Got to lead on your next artifact. And two, uh, you guys have no idea who has Nisbeth. That's true. I feel like Nisbeth has Nisbeth. You think so? I don't think I that f- will last for very long, though. No. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure Legitimately, sure. I don't think Nerium cares anymore. I don't think like, so. She, cares either. she has basically played with the uh, the Covenos, and they have not uh, met her expectations. So it's kind of like you give somebody. Like you hand somebody like one of those game, like like a, a new video game, and then like they play it and they're excited, and then they they look at it and it's one of those LCD beat beat beat. It's like a like a Game and Watch instead of a Game Boy. Hey man, some of them Game and Watch games were legit. Yeah, some of them were dope. <laughs> I had the Mario one and like the little Zelda one. I just have the one like you get. It's like it's one of the dollar store ones, so it's like you get it and it's like just like a crab, like you. Uh. With a ball. All right. So we are taking the Jacques Talil with Peachberry to seek out this artifact across the sea. Do I have that correct? Yep. Excellent. Yes. So that's what I will prep for uh, next week. Does What does Tenacity say when we send her a message basically telling her that we have a lead and we got to follow it right now? So here's after... what you... For, first of all, Tenacity is livid. Furious. With double owl. Right. Yeah. Nisbet's escape or her kidnap or whatever happened was not any of your fault. Uh, That's good. But yeah, if you have a lead on one of these artifacts, she's going to trust your judgment because that's been your bread and butter the whole time you've been serving aboard this vessel. This does mean, Uh, however, I'm going to plan this adventure. Usually when I plan adventures in this campaign, it's with the understanding that you've always got the deceit as like your base that you can get back to swap out items if you want take a long rest or whatever mm. you won't have that going forward if you're going to take the Jacques Talil. can yeah. we before we leave can we go back and uh get our get things off of the deceit yeah go or... ahead and do do one last swap from the deceit for whatever you want make sure you have whatever uh, each of you pick whatever artifact you want for this for this quest yeah okay but you won't have access to the other ones. Do we buy the harvest sack off the ship? Yeah, you guys. Who has that? Uh, I think somebody said give it to Nerium, but I, I don't wrote care Nerium. who has it. Who has yeah. it? Like it'd Nerium be has either it, I guess. Nerium or uh, Nazir. I think would be the best ones to carry it because we're l- least likely to. Listen, I get punched in the face a lot. Nazir gets punched in the face significantly less. So yeah, if, if Nazir no has the art of, if Nazir has the harvest sack, sometimes Nazir is going to be merged into the harvest sack. So my vote's for Nerium. That's also true. So yeah, yeah, that is true. All right. I mean, so fine, Nazir, carry. are you taking the? Are you still wearing the stud? Yes, sir. As a Prince Albert. No. <laughs> then Nazir, don't be gross. It's not that gross. All right. So I've got you with the stud. Uh, Son, are you? You're wearing, damn right, it's not. Are you? Still wielding the cloak? Uh. Yeah. Okay. And Benny, you had taken the, th- you wanted the, the boots for the wedding, but the thread for the adventure. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm going to switch to the thread now and give it a shot. Nerium, are you sticking with the choker? Yes. Well, hold on. Let me think about the boots. Mm-hmm. Uh, where is the boots? Boots, boots, boots. 
I just want to look at them. Yeah. I don't know how up to date these are, but they're in there. Well, for ten eight or zero AP, there. Yeah, I'll have zero AP on it. Correct. Covers a wide magic surge. Soros keeping the chain. Keeping the chain. Okay, and you can play around with its familiar option. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep the choker just because we never know when I'll have these jokers are all gonna get cursed again, and I'm gonna have to extort remove curse scrolls from a uh, two faced merchant. Right. Yeah. What if that guy's brother works in this next dungeon? Man, that would be funny. <laughs> the would, family we, of we traveling to, merchants. Yeah, we, we would have. I feel, like like, I feel like it's like a dragon quest like that. We would have two nickels. <laughs> like, it's strange that we have two nickels, but we have two nickels now. Excellent. All right. Does anybody else feel like I did Sarah a little dirty? No. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you do. No. <laughs> No, no, perfect. No notes. Like exactly. I, I'm like I, I feel bad, but I also love it. Like I, I, I no surprise. I kind of love the idea of like Miriam is not like not sure. Like is she crazy or is she actually royalty? Yeah, no. The Nazir was Nazir was on the fence about it, and now he's even more on the fence about it. If that could be possible, he built more fence to be on. Yeah. All right. Don't have any encounter experience for this session the nonsense there, there were no monsters attacking the cake did not come to life i'm surprised no torques. i feel like i feel like it would have been uh i feel like it would have been uh in poor form to, to just repeat the cake encounter <laughs> you say that but i mean mimic, mimic cake. cake it's right there mimic like, cake yeah oh i mean here's the thing though Brickard, is you already threw like 16 mimics all in one, all in one dungeon at us. What are the, what are the odds then? Like, what are the chances I'm going to do a 17th mimic in the next dungeon? Yes, 100. Here's, here's the thing about yeah, mimics. It's like, one. like people lump them together as one thing, right? Kind of like cancer, but it's like they're all like distinct monsters with their own distinct habitats. Yeah. So you can't just say you could see a mimic anywhere. That could be a mimic right now. Your dog could be a mimic noodle. <gasps> oh no. Oh. <laughs> all right. So, I think I ruined enough of the wedding. Yeah, I don't no. Want, I wouldn't even call it ruined. I thought it went really well. I'm, I'm sad my uh, my attempts to seduce the Golden Claw did not go out very well. Uh, no, he wasn't having any piece of that. <laughs> it's, you know what? It really ruins my day when you won't let me use my supernaturally high... Uh, persuasion and deception things to mind control your NPCs. I was shocked that you specifically said you weren't wearing the choker. Well, I, cause I can't hit on anybody. <laughs> no, but you could have went and mind controlled the for golden claw. Yeah. For one minute. That would have been enough. Okay. The next time I see the golden claw after I hit the fifth level, I'm going to curse him to like, evacuate his bowels every couple of every every few minutes that's gross with my curse spell i don't know that i could allow that kind of thing now here's a question next week when you draw the next does it have to be in a different color since you're not on the deceit Ooh, that's a good yeah, question you should, yeah, you should, should draw gold. it in like green or something or gold yeah but that's a that's the problem for next week. Can we like flip this token over and uh, then it becomes the oh no now it's just facing the other way. <laughs> well, there we go. It's it's not the deceit. It's the inverse. It's it's the deceit with a goatee. <laughs> with a goatee. It's All deceit. right. Listen, I just I just watched the uh, I, I I just watched the first season of Star Trek Discovery and there's some there's some mirror universe shenanigans in that season. Speaking of so, shenanigans, I've got goatee. I got goatees on the mind. Does anybody want some blips? I do. Yeah. Or Miriam, do. what kind of blips do you want? Uh, I would like to take my alignment, uh, neutral evil. Everything is for my own amusement. For asking the golden claw for beating my pl to be my plus one. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Uh, uh my uh, rule seventeen confidence is key for sneaking behind Benny and Nazir and paying extra to make the wedding more extra. I went ahead and made a lot of the stuff more extra, yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Thank you for and, the fairy fire sprinkles. And the tattoos. And my, yeah. Oh, okay. the, the tattoo were the tattoos my fault? Uh, and uh my yeah, fault. because they, they gave Gary a whole bunch of money for the bachelor party. You came in and says like here's double what they gave you. 
Yeah. Uh, my my flaw rule number nine. There's no situation you can't get out of without a bigger lie. For gifting the two of them something that definitely probably won't bite me in the ass. Probably. We'll see. I, I trust them to use them responsibly. My question is: Does Nirium even know anything useful that they'd want to learn? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But like, like it's like the thing is, it's like literally every word out of her. Like she's almost like she's almost like hyper. Uh, already hyper you know truthful because like everything she says is a lie it's the kind of story beat that i appreciate because i don't have to do anything this is this is just player nonsense this is just players right. yeah, yeah. diddling themselves yeah. i yeah. just sit back and let it happen right yeah no but, it's great the, i love it but the thing is is like i don't uh, honestly don't expect benny to ever use them i expect Miriam to uh, i mean excuse me is here to use all five you're uh, probably not wrong. Yeah, no, nah, you're right on the money for Benny. Nazir, you go next because you have a Z in your name. I, a, a Z, okay. Uh, I have um, Queen A as ideal. Take what's worth taking. Keep what's worth keeping. For this, for immediately grabbing on this idea of we're going to take these Gianti for a ride and 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 build them for all they're worth. Okay. And get and get one of our and get one of these artifacts we're supposed to chase down for it. Uh, neutral evil, everything is expendable if Benedict is in danger. Although Benedict was not in danger. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to skip that one. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to ask, wait, what was he in danger? What, was that the fireball yeah. thing? <laughs> well, I mean, I was gonna say, Nazir didn't really, have any, didn't really have any input on the outcome of the fireball, so I can't really do that. You could have told Peachberry, hey, it's just like a... This is... Like a symbolic gesture, don't actually use the strongest magic spell you have. Yeah, he was fine. He was fine. It worked out. <laughs> and and then uh, Nazir's flaw. Everything would just be so much better if they listened to me, and now they have to. <laughs> <laughs> at least until they get tired of your shit and put a knife in your back. Yeah, at least until uh, yeah, at least until then. Yeah. All right. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can go. Sara. Now they have to. Um, alignment by any means necessary. That would be using four moves to make that history check. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ideal. Honestly, no, that was really helpful, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you're right, by any means necessary. Okay, we'll uh, the NT Empire must rise from the ashes for the ideal. That would be uh, refusing to move after being shoved or give an inch to this... this impri empire imposter. Because they, they basically invaded your empire... Exactly. Because you're five foot square. <laughs> it's a little bigger than that now. It depends on whether Sarah is wielding her halberd or her... Yeah, she's, right. if she's got a pole arm going. <laughs> yeah. Or the spear. If she's doing the spear... <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then flaws. I'm going to take the ones the uh, chain. Everyone is guilty of something. Okay. That would be Benny is guilty of bad fashion sense in the eyes of the NT Empire, and that's why he got a beautiful cloak made of snakeskin. Aw. Aw. That's, that's the grossest, nicest thing. That's, that yeah, is, the grossest, it is nicest. really a nice offering in a really kind of strange way. <laughs> She's like, I spit, every, forever. I spit into this jar every day for a year, and now it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> Fringe. I, f I feel like everybody like up there was like grossed out, except for Biddy, who is genuinely touched. Uh, it son, was a really thoughtful gesture. Son, do you want to go next? Yeah. So I've got uh, Serenity's alignment always acts in the face of the oppression for suggesting immediately forming a slave revolt on the Yanti ship. Yep. I've got my uh, ideal exceed ex all expectations for actually making good on the joke wedding registry. <laughs> good. And that's it. And then I hope that hang glider's on your character sheet now. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys add in all these things. That yeah. thing is extremely yeah. bulky, though. So I'm going to need to know when you're taking it and when you're leaving it behind. Because my, my expectation is that it's as big as, like, an explorer's pack with all of your adventuring gear in it. Can we just, like, take it apart and, like, put it in the haversack? It, oh. You could, but then it would take a long time to reassemble. But, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I think the haversack, yeah. that's fine for that. Yeah, if we had the time to put it together, that could absolutely yeah. be a thing. It's not going to be a quick getaway, but... Benny, you didn't want any blips, did you? Yeah, I've had enough fun. No, I, I might as well claim some. Yeah, okay. You might as well. Uh, alignment, neutral, good. Go by the good book. If that doesn't work, go with your heart. 
uh, for inviting Captain Eyes to his wedding. Okay. Uh, ideal, I'm taking Jenny's. The one who ain't laughing is the butt of the joke. For posting his wedding... Wedge- eh. For posting his wedding registry as a joke, but actually getting some surprising outcomes from it. Okay. And then Flaw, do it for him, uh, literally getting married to Nazir. I don't know that that's worth a blip, though. If that was... Pretty pedestrian wedding vows. Three out of ten. Mm, yeah, you're mid. right. Yeah. Uh, blips are currently Look, worse. I did get the fireball in the face. 466. Who had the most creative solution to a problem this session? Um, uh, we didn't get to I'm going to go with Nazir for rolling with the whole you're the Empress thing. Yeah, that's good. Give it to Nazir. Yep. Who did the most to further the party's goals this week? I mean, Nerium did a lot of wedding work. Nerium did do a lot of legwork yeah. for the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> she bankrolled half of it. Like, yeah. And she yeah. didn't tell anybody she was doing it either. She yeah. just yeah. did it. Who was the badass? I want to uh, uh, draw. Benedict for taking a fire, 50 damage fireball to the face. Why does Sarah want it? Zero? Sarah wants it for standing up to the the invaders. But did I want to I want to give Sarah one. I want to give you intangibles. I want to give many intangibles. I'll make okay. your case and then we'll make a decision for intangibles. My case for Sarah to get intangibles is her basically uh Sarah interrupted basically she's like oh yes my time has come and then they go and they bowed in his ear and that was the fun that was the best i'm sorry i lost my shit at that yeah that was... i could hear the music going Ew. see i want to i want to give it to benny for that stupidly ridiculous wedding bow thing that i really hope mcdoll's husband didn't actually hear <laughs> it was adorable. I'll have to play yeah. it back sometime. Oh, he'll play it back for, for him. It'll be I quick. even shared it with him. Oh, oh you my... did? You sent you, you messaged I him sent... with it? No, no, I sent it to you, Nicole. Oh. oh I okay. sent it to you like weeks ago because I oh, did you? It. I didn't like... see that. Oh. I, I could even no, I could even see Brick's face as, as Raz was reading that going, damn, I wish my vows were this good. Huh. I spent a few hours writing that. I am broke at thesaurus.com. So we're giving <laughs> Benny and Sarah one each. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Howard shakes it. That's fine. We'll just yeah, have, yeah. leave it, it ambiguous matter. who got what. All right. So I've got Nazir going into this adventure. You have four and just earned three. So you're rolling over at least one. Yeah, if you so want to come to Mexico six. San yeah. had two and earned two. Yep. Benny had three and earned four. So you're rolling over one to come in next week with six. Yeah. You Miriam, said four, six, six. Yes, 466 is yep. what they're worth. Nerium and Sarah both had two and earned four. So you can each come in next week with six. And we will embark on the next leg of our journey to collect all these treasures for your pirate ship and or Yanti Empire, however you choose to look at it. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for playing, guys. Exciting. We weddings. Mm-hmm. Later. We, do, we, 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 we wedding semi-successfully. We don't have to do that ever again.